Live on a Saturday afternoon at Utah Grizzlies Hockey as it's a rubber match of a three-game series between the Grizzlies and the Allen Americans. Hi, everybody. I'm Tyson Whiting. Welcome to Utah Grizzlies Hockey. It's the sixth meeting of nine straight on the road for the Grizzlies. It's the longest road trip of the regular season. It's the rubber match not only of the three-game series between the Grizzlies and the Americans. It's the seventh and final meeting between the clubs in Utah is 3-3 three and three against the Americans this year. So now are they battling for the three-game series here this week, but they are also battling for the victory of the season series. On Wednesday night, Allen got a 5-4 to four victory over Utah. Dakota Raby, though, had two goals, and Tyler Penner had three assists to lead the Utah attack. Both teams had 41 shots. Uh, both teams had good goaltending, good goaltenders in there who are now with the AHL as Trent Miner stopped 36 of 41 for the Grizzlies and Allen's Levi Marilinen saved 37 of 41. For Allen, they got two goals from Grant Bear and one goal and one assist from Hank Crone and Mikael Robido. Grizzlies last night played about as good, well a game as they've had in about a month. Uh, Grizzlies were outstanding, scoring the first six goals of the contest. Dylan Fitz had two goals and one assist, and Brett Stapley had two goals to lead the Grizzlies' attack, and Utah also got goals from Adam Berg and Josh Wesley. The Grizzlies did outshoot the Americans 29-27, to and the Grizzlies had a pretty good night on the special teams. They were one for four on the power play and a perfect two for two on the penalty kill. Dante Genuzzi got the win in net as he stopped 25 of 27. This afternoon, it's going to be Will Cranley getting the start for Utah. He'll be going up against Chase Perry, who saved 23 of 29 in last night's game. So it's going to be a lot of fun. The Grizzlies, the Americans, I'm hanging out uh, near the lobby at Maverick Center, right next to the Grizzlies team store at Maverick Center is the gymnastics meet, the big gymnastics meet going on between the University of Utah, Oklahoma, I think LSU and UCLA. So great happenings here at Maverick Center. And there's another session this evening. I know that BYU is one of the four teams. And there's three other top-level gymnastics programs that are going to be at Maverick Center. And then Monday is going to be the Best of Utah gymnastics meet with four local programs competing at Maverick Center on Monday at about 4 o'clock. But at Ma in Allen, Texas, looks like it's going to be a fun one as the Grizzlies take on the Allen Americans. There's been quite a few key contributors for the Grizzlies. We'll talk about them, and we'll also talk about some of the key additions to the Grizzlies over the last few weeks as we're in business on a Saturday afternoon, and you're listening to the Grizzlies Hockey Network, presented by Rio Tinto Kennecott. This isn't just copper. It's our job. It's food on our family's tables. Without it, we couldn't stay in touch. It's what keeps our homes warm and our lights on. It's the power behind the team and a greener, brighter future. This isn't just copper. It's a proud Utah and a strong America. Welcome back to Utah Grizzlies Hockey. Face off in about 15 minutes from now over in Allen, Texas, as I'm hanging out in the lobby at Maverick Center here in the Grizz Cave, right next to the Grizzlies team store. Utah has been led by Brett Stapley as of late. He had two goals last night. He now has a point in eight straight games where he has five goals and seven assists. 2024 All-Star Kyle Mayhew has a point in seven of his last eight games as he had one assist last night in the 6-2 victory. Brandon Cutler's got a point in three straight games. Cutler has two goals and one assist in his last three contests. Defensively, Brian Yoon has really been a force. A first-year pro is a plus nine in his last seven games and a plus nine in six games against the Americans this season. So Brian Yoon's done some outstanding work against the Allen Americans this year. The Americans, despite last night's loss, have been a pretty hot team as of late. As they have won nine of their last 11 games. Last night's loss for the Americans ended a six-game winning streak, and they are led by Hank Crone, who has a point in 16 straight games. Other leaders for the Grizzlies against Allen this year include Cole Gallant, who leads the Grizzlies with nine points in six games against Allen, where he has two goals and seven assists. He had two helpers in last night's game. Nathan Burke and Brett Stapley each have eight points against Allen this year. Burke has four goals and four assists. Stapley has two goals and six assists with both of those goals coming last night. Mick Messner's also been pretty good 
against Allen this year as he has four goals in six games against the Americans. And Brandon Cutler has three goals and three assists against the Americans. And Dakota Raby, who's really been a star for the Grizzlies this series, has two goals and four assists against Allen this year. One other guy we mentioned, Hank Crone, the 16-game point scoring streak. He had an assist in last night's contest. Also watch out for Colby McCauley. He's going to be wearing number 29. He has two goals and six assists against the Grizzlies this year. One of six defensemen who are going to be in the lineup this afternoon is Zane Schartz, who was signed by the Grizzlies yesterday. Schartz, a native of Plano, Texas, is appearing with his seventh different team in the league. He wore number 26 last night, and he picked up an assist in Brett Stapley's first period goal. Uh, Schartz also has pro experience in this league with Norfolk, Indy, Toledo, Orlando, Kansas City, and Newfoundland. He also played in one SBHL game with the Knoxville Ice Bears. A couple days ago, goaltender Trent Miner and defenseman Johnny Fairbrother were called back up with the AHL's Colorado Eagles. Really a big loss for Allen is on Thursday, they lost goaltender Levi Marilinen to the AHL's Belleville Senators, and that was certainly a big loss considering that Marilinen is 9-4 and four this year with a save percentage of around 930. It's the Grizzlies and the Americans coming up from Allen, Texas, and it's going to be an interesting one as the series is on the line and the season series is also on the line. Allen won 5-4 to four on Wednesday. The Grizzlies on Friday night picked up a 6-2 to two victory. Utah is looking for their first road Series victory of the year. They are two and fourteen away from Maverick Center and eleven and six at home. As for Allen, it's they're starting the second half of the season for them as it's game thirty-seven of seventy-two. The Americans are seventeen, eighteen, and one this season. Goaltending matchup: Will Cranley will get the start for the Grizzlies. This will be a seventh appearance in a Utah uniform. He'll be going up against Chase Perry, who's got an 4 and one record with a five point five four goals against average it's the Grizzlies and the Americans I believe there's going to be a blackout jersey and it's gonna be pretty tough to spot but it should be a lot of fun nonetheless as we'll come back and have the starting lineups for both teams as we're in business on a Saturday afternoon as it's the Grizzlies and the Americans meeting for the seventh and final time this year on the Grizzlies Hockey Network Commercial direct racial truck accessories, Mountain Land Truck Outfitters has got what you need. Flatbeds, spray and bed liners, lifts and leveling kits, wheels and tires. Mountain Land Truck Outfitters proudly uses a brand you know and trust. And with our experienced, knowledgeable, and friendly staff, your visit here will be informative and enjoyable. Stop into our convenient location in Provo at 265 South 100 West or call 801-225-4637 to get a quote for your fleet or individual truck. Smith's always gives you more ways to save on top of our lower than low prices. And when you download the Smith's app, you can enjoy over $500 in savings every week with digital coupons and earn fuel points to save up to a dollar per gallon at the pump. With a Boost membership, you'll save even more with double fuel points and free delivery. Discover more ways to save big every day. Smith's fresh for everyone. What's on tap for the Grizzlies here on the road trip? After tonight's game, the Grizzlies will head to Wichita, Kansas and take on the Thunder for the fourth and final time this year. It will be the only meeting for the Grizzlies at Intrust Bank Arena. Next week, the Grizzlies' road trip continues as they will be in Chile, Kansas City, where they will take on the Kansas City Mavericks for the first two times this season. Next Friday and Saturday, the Grizzlies will be in Kansas City. Friday, January 19th is going to be a 635 start. Saturday, January 20th is going to be at 5.05. Grizzlies return home to Maverick Center for a big three-game series against the Rapid City Rush. We'll come back and give you the starting lineups for both teams. It's the Grizzlies and the Americans coming up next on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. Thanks to Les Schwab tires. I'm a confident backseat driver, but mom's a little stressed about spending. Remember, breathe in. Now watch your speed and 
breathe out. Good. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So it's right here. Help keep drivers and backseat drivers safe with Les Schwab tires. Maverick's new Bean to Cup machines always deliver a freshly ground cup of coffee on demand so you can enjoy any of our premium roasts at their best, day or night, hot or ice. Enjoy a fresh cup today. Since 1939, America First has helped people start businesses, buy homes and cars, and achieve their financial goals. Today, our top priority is still the financial success of you and your family, which is why we're giving new members $100 when they sign up for a basic savings and checking account and another $100 when they upgrade to premium checking and enroll in and use direct deposit. So head to AmericaFirst.com today and join the credit union that always puts its members first. This isn't just copper. It's our job. It's food on our family's tables. Without it, we couldn't stay in touch. It's what keeps our homes warm and our lights on. It's the power behind the team and a greener, brighter future. This isn't just copper. It's a proud Utah and a strong America. Welcome back to Utah Grizzlies Hockey. I'm Tyson Whiting. Let's get to the starting lineups for both teams. First, for the visiting Utah Grizzlies, who have a record of 13 and 20 this year, they're 11 and 6 at home and 2 and 14 on the road. They are led by third-year head coach Ryan Kanaswich. His assistant is Christian Horn. The equipment manager is Jackson Hibbard. The trainer is Colin Lee. Starting in net for the Grizzlies is going to be Will Cranley, who's making his seventh appearance for the Grizzlies in six games of the Utah. He has a one and two record with a 3.78 goals against average and an 897 save percentage. Granley is 6'4 and 185 pounds. He was a former St. Louis Blues draft pick, and he's currently on an NHL entry level deal with the St. Louis Blues. The starting defensive pairing for the Grizzlies, Brian Yoon, who's been outstanding in the plus minus category. He leads the Grizzlies in plus minus with a plus 10 rating, and he's been particularly strong against the Americans, where he has a plus nine in six games. He'll be paired up with Quinn Wickers, who was a plus two in last night's contest. Wickers this season with Utah has one goal and five assists and a plus four rating. He's taken 18 shots on goal in 13 games for the Grizz. So the starting defensive pairing is Wickers. And Eum, we will also see a lot of Kyle Mayhew, who has a point in seven of his last eight games. Mayhew, who's going to the All-Star game on Monday in Savannah, Georgia, is tied for the club lead with nine power play points, two goals, and seven assists. He is also second among all league rookie defensemen with 21 points. Mayhew will be paired up with the captain, Josh Wesley, who has a power play point in four of his last six games. We'll also see the Arizona State product, Jacob Semek, who had one assist in last night's game. And the newest Grizzly, Zane Sharts, will make his second appearance in a Grizzlies uniform. Sharts will be wearing number 26. So starting defensive pairing once again is Yoon and Wickers. We will also see Mayhew and the captain, Josh Wesley, as well as Jacob Semek and Zane Sharts. 11 forwards for the Grizzlies this evening. Starting forwards are the same three that started last night's game. Dylan Fitz had two goals and one assist last night. Fitz has four goals in his last five games. He'll be one starting forward wearing number 13. Tyler Penner has been outstanding this series, probably the best series he's played all year. He had three assists on Wednesday night. He picked up one helper in last night's contest. So in five games in the month of January, Tyler Penner has one goal and four assists. Dakota Raby has been outstanding in his entire career against the Americans. Raby had two goals on Wednesday night, and he had one assist and one fight last night where he fought former teammate Johnny Walker. Raby has two goals and four assists against Allen this year, and last year he had two goals and five assists against the Americans. So watch out for Dakota Raby. He'll be wearing number 22. So starting forwards once again are Fitz, Penner, and Raby. We will also see a lot of Brett Stapley, who's got a current eight-game point scoring streak where he has 12 points in those games. He also leads the Grizzlies in assists with 22 and points with 30. He also leads Utah with eight multiple-point games. Stapley will be lined up next to Nathan Burke, who had an assist last night. Burke has 10 goals and 10 assists this season. Burke has taken 74 shots for Utah, which ranks fourth on the club. 
And Cole Gallant had two assists last night. He'll be in there for the Grizzlies. Gallant had 16 points in 15 games in December. And Gallant has four assists in his last three games. So watch out for Cole Gallant. He'll be wearing number 25. Uh, Grizzlies will also have Mick Messner in there. He is third on the club with nine goals, and he's also third on the team with 86 shots on goal. So watch out for Mick Messner. He'll be wearing number 10. Adam Berg returns to the lineup. Uh, Adam Berg uh, picked up a goal last night on a great pass from Brandon Cutler. Aaron Aragon's the one that returns to the Grizzlies lineup after serving a two-game suspension. Aragon with Utah this season in 21 games has three goals and one assist. We'll also see Brandon Cutler. We mentioned Cutler is going to be in there for Utah. And oh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens uh, with the lineup here. Is, um looks like the Grizzlies are going to be going with seven defensemen tonight. As it looks like Campania was a late scratch. And Jordan Stone has been added to the lineup. So Stone's going to be in there replacing Campania. And Stone might be playing some shifts as a forward. Otherwise, he'll be a seventh defenseman. Stone wearing number 19 will make his 19th appearance this year. So scratches for the Grizzlies include defenseman Kay Jensen, Michael Underwood, Keone, and Keone Teixeira. Looks like the scratches in terms of forwards for the Grizzlies are going to be Dean Yakura, Cody Curran, and J.C. Campania. As Jordan Stone's going to be in the lineup for the first time in the Allen series. He played in all three games against Newfoundland. Starting lineup for the Allen Americans wearing a black jersey with white red outline. The numbers might be very tough to spot. Starting goaltender is going to be Chase Perry. He is 0-4-1 this season in seven games. He has a 5.54 goals against average and an 866 save percentage. Starting defensive pairing is Chris Mullary, number four. Uh, Mullary was a minus four in last night's game. He'll be paired up with Ty Farmer, who has two assists in 12 games. Starting forwards, the former Grizzly, Taron Pfizer, will be in there. He's got one assist in two games with Allen. He previously played in 12 games with Belleville in the AHL earlier this season. Pfizer normally wears number eight, but he'll be number nine in the blackout jerseys this afternoon. Easton Brzezinski has five goals against the Grizzlies this year. He's normally wearing number 15, but today uh, he actually wears number 18 normally. Today he's going to be wearing number 22. And Grant Abair is also in the lineup. He had two goals on Wednesday night. Allen won 5-4 to four on Wednesday. The Grizzlies came back last night and won 6-2. to two. We'll see what happens here on the rubber match. We'll come back and have face-off over in Allen, Texas. This has been the Rio Tinto Kennecott pregame show on the Utah Grizzlies Hockey Network. Commercial to recreational truck accessories, Mountain Land Truck Outfitters has got what you need. Flatbeds, spray and bed liners, lifts and leveling kits, wheels and tires. Mountain Land Truck Outfitters proudly uses a brand you know and trust. And with our experienced, knowledgeable, and friendly staff, your visit here will be informative and enjoyable. Stop into our convenient location in Provo at 265 South 100 West or call 801-225-4637 to get a quote for your fleet or individual truck. Smith's always gives you more ways to save on top of our lower than low prices. And when you download the Smith's app, you can enjoy over $500 in savings every week with digital coupons and earn fuel points to save up to a dollar per gallon at the pump. With a Boost membership, you'll save even more with double fuel points and free delivery. Discover more ways to save big every day. Smith's. Thanks to Les Schwab tires, I'm a constant backseat driver, but mom's a little stressed about spending. Remember, breathe in. Now watch your speed and breathe out. Good. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So it's right here. Help keep drivers and backseat drivers safe with Les Schwab tires.
expectations here will always remain high and we'll continue to find a way. Guys put together a lot of good games, you know. Great day for hockey as two big standings points are all on the line as the Grizzlies take on the Allen Americans for the seventh and final time this season. It's the rubber match of the three-game series as both teams have won one game in the set. Both teams have three wins against the other here this season as Grizzlies wear, are what today are wearing the cream color jerseys with two horizontal stripes in the front of the jersey. Josh Wesley, the Grizzlies captain, uh, with the ceremonial puck drop. He's sporting the jersey with green numbers in the black with black trim. And it's a pretty sharp cream looking jersey. As for the Allen Americans, it's their blackout jersey. Boy, the numbers might be really tough to spot on a black jersey with red outline, red lettering in the back. As Taryn Fizer will get the start, he'll be wearing number nine for Allen, along with Grant Abear and Easton Brzezinski. For the Grizzlies, it was the forward line that got the team jump started last night. Dylan Fitz along with Tyler Penner and Dakota Raby. Penner's going to take the draw. Gwen Wickers and Brian Yoon will be the starting defensive pairing. Will Cranley's in net for the Grizz. He's got a 1-2 and two record with an 8-97 save percentage on 3.58 goals against average. This will be Cranley's seventh game for the Grizzlies. Utah skates from left to right as we see it on Flow Sports. Your minds, I see it on YouTube. Grizzlies won the draw. They skate from left to right as... Uh, Wickers moves it ahead. Grizzlies get it to Penner, who backhands it in. Fitz chases after it. As over in the near corner, Raby will feed it to the near circle. Penner gets it poked away as the Americans will carry it across center ice. Allen will zip it towards the middle. It's tapped by Wicker's stick. Yoon gets pushed as the Grizzlies chip it ahead. As Puck bounces to center ice, Grizzlies gallop after it. Raby gets spun around at center ice, but he's able to throw it in. As Ty Farmer chases after it, boy, the number is going to be an adventure for Allen, to say the least. As I think Pfizer throws it in, as the Allen Americans make their first line change, 43 seconds in. Puck goes out to center ice. Allen will chase after it deep in their own end. The Americans skate from right to left here in the first period, 50 seconds in. As the Americans chip it across. Now they cross center ice. Mikael Robido tried to brush it in and didn't get much on it. As Grizzlies get it back at center ice, as Stapley will backhand it into his own end. As Wesley gallops after it, he moves it out to center ice as Grizzlies throw a near wing pass to Stapley at center ice. Stapley back to Gallant, who skates down the middle. Gallant right circle, righty shot, goes wide and stays in play as he fired it over Chase Perry. As the Americans back in their own end, and boy, the numbers are incredibly difficult to spot. Nolan Orzek over to the near side. It's a blank jersey. It probably looks better on in person than it does on TV. As Gavin Gould chases after it, Cranley fires it off the far wing wall. As Burke will move it out to center ice, Allen get, gets it back. As Chris Mullary at neutral ice will fire it to the right corner. As it got towards the boards on no hops, the ice Allen centers it out front. They couldn't handle it. Now the Americans left side shot goes wide as Cranley was laying down on the crease. Left point, Americans, Mullary gets it across as Allen now gets it to the far goal line. Two minutes in, they chip it back to the right point. Americans skate towards their left. Lefty shot gets blocked away by Mayhew, and it flies out of play as we get our first whistle with 18.01 left in the first period. Everybody make your pick for the opt-in first goal of the game as to who's going to score first for you, Tom. I don't know. I'm thinking I'm going to go with uh, um, – it's a tough choice. Brandon Cutler, I think he's scoring first for the Grizz tonight. Cutler, Cutler leads the Grizzlies with 12 goals this season. Allen wins the draw. They're in the offensive zone, right point. They wrap it around the boards. Now behind the net, the Americans skate towards the far corner as they zip it up top as – a lefty shot saved by Cranley as that was taken by an Allen defenseman and couldn't quite identify who that was. We believe Andrew Jarvis is actually a scratch tonight. Uh, <laughs> couldn't quite tell who took that shot. Uh, the uniforms probably look a lot better in person. It might have been Kobe McCauley that took that shot, number 29. Allen wins the draw. Chris Mullary skates towards his right, drops it off for Hank Crone, we think. Crone looks to center it and bounced off the of Messner. Puck flips high into the air, bounces at Messner's ankle. He backhands it towards the near side. Now Allen gets it up top. Mullary 
moves it ahead. Now the Americans get it back to the right side for Eric Williams. He'll fire it to the far goal line as McCauley gets up top to Maleri as he fires towards the net, and he gets blocked about halfway to Cranley as the puck zips around the wall to the near far side. Cutler brushes ahead as Grizzlies will gallop out to center ice. Two on two, Grizzlies gain the line. Berg with good speed. He stops in the point. And he'll feed it across as Utah to the left side. Fires it towards the net. It gets blocked. Semek was in the area. I think Semek took the shot. Allen back to center ice. It bounced off the skate. Grizzlies will hustle after it. Puck bounced off an official. Allen gets it back at center ice. Left wing. They'll fire it in. Granley has a bounce off his stick as the puck skips towards the right corner on the far side as Utah. Still in their own zone as they get tripped up. Is a call being made? A stone backhands to center ice. Can't quite tell as Aragon is first shift since the Newfoundland series, throws it in. Allen touches up. Yes, a penalty was called. Didn't get to see the official and having it with his arm raised, but I believe a penalty was called on Allen as the Grizzlies got tripped up and neutralized. 16 minutes and 38 seconds left in the first. Looks like the Grizzlies are going to be on the power play for the first time this afternoon. As going to the box is Easton Brzezinski, who normally wears number 18. He's wearing number 22 today. He gets his 33rd and 34th penalty minute of the year. Grizzly 17% on the power play. Allen's penalty kill is 77.9%. As the draw is won by the Grizz, as Kyle Mayhew skates towards the left circle, lefty shot is blocked. Mayhew skates towards the far corner to get it, but it goes to the Americans, and they sell it out. As Cranley, back at the far goal line, will throw it around his net. Stapley skates around an American. As Stapley will move it ahead. Grizzly still in their own zone as Kyle Mayhew will cross center ice. He'll drop it back off for Stapley, who crossed the red line. Now he skips it to Gallant. Puck bounced off him, and now the Americans skate into the attack zone. We believe it's Hank Crone firing towards the net, saved by Cranley. And Cranley holds on as we get a whistle with 124 left in the power play, 16.02 left in the first. Still early on, so grab some chips and dip and a beverage of your choice. Enjoy a little bit of Saturday with us. Looks like Joe Gattenby is in there, a defenseman. Gattenby, we believe, is replacing Andrew Jarvis in the lineup. Gattenby has seven assists in 30 games this year. Colin Jacobs will take the draw against Mick Messner as Allen in their black jerseys with white outline, with red outline. We wish it was white outline, red pants, and black and red socks. Grizzlies win the draw. They made a line change during the last whistle as Brian Yoon drops it off as Grizzlies get to new tries with Messner near the Grizzlies bench. Messner will backhand it across. The Grizzlies still in their own end as Yoon will drop it off for Nathan Burke. As Burke skates down the middle, he gets to neutralize. He throws a right wing pass to Fitz that connects. Fitz on the right side will lay it for Cutler. Now back to the left side. Grizzlies will tap it off the end boards as it goes to Cutler. He's on the right side. He skates towards his left. Back to Raby. Raby kicks it across. It bounces off an American stick and goes to Cutler, who skates in a half circle towards the left circle. Take a lefty shot. Saved by Perry. As the Americans gather it, and they slide it out to center ice to bounce off a Yoon stick. Yoon will hustle after it in the Grizzly zone near side as the Americans make a line change. 30 seconds left in the power play. Still no score about five minutes in. As Cutler loses the puck as Allen, and that's Terran Pfizer as a glance off his stick towards Mayhew. As Mayhew gathers it and gets to Messner, skates behind Utah's net. Messner brushes it over to Mayhew. As he's at neutral ice, Mayhew crosses center left wing. Now he gains the line as he'll lay it for Wesley in the left side. Wesley skates towards his right, gets it back to Mayhew. Mayhew will switch places with Wesley as Mayhew directs it to the near wing for Raby. Raby across to Wesley, bounced off his skate. Out of the box is Brzezinski, and we're skating five on five. Grizzlies center from the far corner. Allen picks it off. The Americans throw it to the far side as Allen, about five and a half minutes in, will hold on to it as everybody spreads the ice. So now the Americans will throw it to the near side and start the attack. Allen crosses center ice. They feed it to the right pass, connects. Allen skates in, righty shot, glove saved by Cranley. What a stop by Cranley is the long-range pass diagonally connected, and an American had a really good look on the right side and just fired a shot into Cranley's glove. I think that might have been Johnny Walker that took the shot. We couldn't really really tell, and you really can't tell who's who unless you get a real close-up like we have right now on Flow Sports as to who's who. As Cranley made a nice save, I, the American player might have come a little bit too close to Cranley and kind of cut off his own shooting angle. 
Off the draw, Allen with a shot, and it's blocked away as momentum of it goes all the way deep in the American zone as Allen chases after it and gathers it behind Chase Perry's net. We're six minutes in, still no score. Grizzlies have had one power play. Allen's yet to go on the man advantage. It's the Americans get it around center ice, and they'll wrap it around the boards. Cranley lets it go towards the near corner as the Americans will zip it back to the far side. As Allen spreads the ice to get it up top. I believe that's Eric Williams. Right wing, righty shot, kick saved by Cranley. Allen gets the rebound on the far side. Now they move it up top. Americans get it across. Gatby, we believe, trying to keep it in. He'll throw it around the wall. Stapley gets it in front of his net as a pass connects for Burke. Right wing pass to Gallant. Gallant tried to get it back to Burke. It bounced off, bounced off an Allen skate. Now the Americans gather it in their own end. As Allen skating from right to left, we'll kick it off of Stapley. And now another American will zip a left wing pass. It connects. Now they drop it off. The Americans cross center ice with speed. Allen fakes a shot, skates towards the left circle. And it's poked away by Semic. Now centering pass, shot, and it's blocked away by Utah. As the Americans back in the left side. Will just outside the circle take a lefty shot. Saved by Cranley. And Will makes the glove stop and holds on as we get a timeout with 12 minutes and 52 seconds left in the first. Still no score between the Grizzlies and the Americans. This is Utah Grizzlies hockey presented by Rio Tinto Kennecott. This isn't just copper. It's our job. It's food on our family's tables. Without it, we couldn't stay in touch. It's what keeps our homes warm and our lights on. It's the power behind the team and a greener, brighter future. This isn't just copper. It's a proud Utah and a strong America. Since 1939, America First has helped people start businesses, buy homes and cars, and achieve their financial goals. Today, our top priority is still the financial success of you and your family, which is why we're giving new members $100 when they sign up for a basic savings and checking account and another $100 when they upgrade to premium checking and enroll in and use direct deposit. So head to AmericaFirst.com today and join the credit union that always puts its members first. Still no score, 12.52 left in the first period. Looks like a good Saturday late afternoon crowd over in Allen, Texas. As a draw is going to be in the Grizzlies zone near circle, Will Cranley's off to a good start for Utah. As a draw taken by the Grizz in one, we can't tell who's who with Allen with these jerseys. As Grizzlies cross center ice, Fitz fires it in. As Allen cuts in front of him, the Americans have the puck. They skate from right to left. Grizzlies skate from left to right here in the first period. Grizzlies get the puck as they cross center ice, and they rainbow it in. As Allen chases after it, they gather it deep in their own zone. As we're seven and a half minutes in, Raby challenging as the Americans back deep in their own end. That might be Joe Gatton, be number 16. As the Americans spread the ice, 12 20 and counting left in the first. As the Americans will now start the attack as Allen gets to neutral ice. Now they cross the red and fire it in. Cranley cuts it off behind his net. Cranley, a big 6'4 goaltender with St. Louis Blues colored pads, gets to the far side. Grizzlies will cross center ice with speed. Utah veers off to the right, and it's Raby, one of the fastest of all the Grizzlies. He loses it as Allen will poke it back to center. Ice Messner fires it back in. Allen gathers the puck as we're eight minutes in. Still no score. Allen lifts it up to center ice and to the right side diagonally, and the pass doesn't connect. Icing is on the Americans with 11.50 left in the first. As on the close-up, you can sort of see the numbers. There's Chris Mullary. Malaria's had an outstanding year for the Americans. He's their captain. He has eight goals and 23 assists in 36 games. Chase Perry a net for the Americans. He had a rough one last night. He was pretty good for the Americans last year, but it's been a tough start of the season for him. Uh, he's taking the draws. Mick Messner, he's got nine goals, which ranked third on the club. There's a draw one by the Grizzlies. Cutler on the far side will get it up top to... Quinn Wickers, Wickers off the end wall as Berg skates around the net with a puck. He'll get it back to the right side for you, and he'll take a righty shot. Saved by Perry. Allen gets it, and they'll advance it to center ice. Allen tried to center it towards center ice, and it's poked away by Allen as Yoon in the area. Allen has a go out of play as Brian Yoon challenging Allen as Chris Mullary wants an offensive zone draw, and it looks like it's going to be at neutral ice as there's 11.29 left in the first. Darren Pfizer wearing number nine today, normally wearing number eight. He was second on the Grizzlies with 
27 points or 27 goals last season. He was also second on the club with 50 points. As Grant Abair will take the draw against Mick Messner, 11-29 left in the first. As Grizzlies win the draw here on the rubber match as Brian Yoon feeds it across to his left as Adam Berg loses his balance as he was gaining the offensive zone. As Yoon gets it back and he'll fly it deep into the American zone backhand style as the Americans get to center ice with good speed. Allen gains his own with momentum as they skate towards the near goal line. Americans drop it off. Now they get it up top as Allen Zips it across. Now it's to the high slot. Allen will fire it off the right corner. Cranley behind his net, aggressively challenging it. And he'll fly it to the far corner. Grizzlies get hit in the back. Now another Grizzly hits the ice. Centering pass out in front. Yoon gets a stick in the way. And the Grizzlies have been active with sticks as Berg gets it across towards Raby. It glanced off his stick. Make that Wickers as the Americans over in the far corner get pushed by Yoon. Now another Grizzly skates over there in that steeply as the puck exits his zone. Good job by Yoon. He's had an outstanding start to this game. Allen back in their own end has it. They skate from right to left as the Americans will cross center ice. We think that's fives or the clean shaven one. He'll get to the left side as the Americans center it out in front. Grizzlies poke it away to the right point. Now right wing, righty shot. Glove saved by Cranley. He holds on as that was a blast taken from the right point. Cranley was able to make the save with 1021 left in the first. And the great thing, not only the save by Cranley, but if somehow the puck bobbled off of Cranley and a rebound was uh, allowed out in front, Grizzlies had three guys there to make sure that they could protect Will Cranley's net, as it's really been a solid defensive effort for the Grizzlies here in the first half of the first period. Aragon will take the drives back after a two-game suspension. He wins it. Grizzlies will skip it into the Allen zone. Americans chase after it. They get in their far circle as Allen will skip it out. Pass picked off. Left side. Shot goes wide. That shot was taken by Kyle Mayhew as Mayhew picked it off and had a pretty good look as it bounced off of Aragon skate and rolls towards Perry who covers up as we get a whistle with 10 minutes and one second left in the first. Boy, the Americans were throwing a long range diagonal pass that was picked off by Mayhew who skated towards the left circle and boy, he just missed high or else he wouldn't have had his eighth of the year. Penner will take the draw. He's got four assists in his last two games. It's really been a strong Start to January for Penner, who has five points in five games. He'll take the draw against Blake Murphy. Blake, don't call me Bruce Murphy. As the Americans win the draw, they'll move it out to center ice. The puck skips along the ice. It looks like it's going to be icing on the Americans. As the long-range passing game, which really worked for them on Wednesday, hasn't necessarily worked since then. As the Grizzlies have done a good job making sure that the Americans didn't get their stretch passing game to work nearly as effective as it normally would. Eric Williams on the ice, talking things over with Blake Murphy, or Blake Murray. Murray, a former Carolina Hurricanes draft pick. Williams played his college hockey at Northeastern. He's a former member of the Grizzlies. He was with the club in the 2019-2020 season, which was his first full season as a pro. Draw goes into the right corner as Fitz delivers a big hit. Allen with a diagonal pass towards center ice. It bounced off of Mayhew. Allen chases after it. Grizzlies deliver a hit as the puck's deep in the Grizzly zone. Center and pass out in front goes wide as Grizzlies chase after it. Dakota Raby gets it in the far corner. He gathers the puck. He stops in the corner. Centers it out in front and it bounced off a of Perry stick. Now it goes to Penner who chips it up top. Right wing for Wesley who fires a shot that's wide. Fitz hits the ice as Allen back along the near side will tap it off the boards and the Americans pass connects over to the right side. Now they zip it to the high slot. Now they get it back towards the goal line. Le lefty shot is blocked away as Cranley did a good job protecting the near side of the net. As Mayhew crosses center ice, he'll fire it in. As he'll chase after it. As the Americans will throw it back towards the far side. We apologize for not being specific on names as the numbers are about the ideal nightmare scenario for a broadcaster. A black jersey with red numbers, kind of a darker red, too. Pass ahead, doesn't connect. Yoon cuts off Allen's pursuit as Cranley covers up as it ricocheted off the end boards. Allen looked like they wanted interference as Brian Yoon was just step for step in front of the Americans. I think that's Mikel Robido, but it uh, looks like uh, Cranley was able to cover up. I'm not sure if they called icing as there's 8.43 left in the first period. Still no score. We'll come back in one minute on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. Smith's always gives you more ways to save on top of our lower than low prices. And when you download the Smith's app, you can enjoy over $500 in savings every week with digital coupons and earn fuel points to save up to a dollar per gallon at the pump. 
With a Boost membership, you'll save even more with double fuel points and free delivery. Discover more ways to save big every day. Smith's fresh for everyone. Thanks to Les Schwab tires, I'm a confident vaccine driver, but mom's a little stressed about spending. Remember, breathe in. Now watch your speed and breathe out. Good. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So it's right here. Help keep drivers and backseat drivers safe with Les Schwab tires. Eight minutes, 43 seconds left in the first period in the seventh and final game in the regular season between the Grizzlies and Americans. Still no score. Allen has outshot Utah 10 to 5. Americans win the draw. Slot righty shot saved by Cranley. Rebound shot saved by Cranley again. As action deep in the Grizzlies zone, as behind the net, Messner, as it bounced off his skate, as Yoon over in the area, as he'll throw it around Utah's net, as Berg hustles after it, but it's Wickers that gets the puck and he rain rainbows it out to center ice. And the puck rolls towards Perry, who kicks it towards the far side as the Americans back towards the near corner as it bounces off of Messner. As Messner, Allen lifts it out to center ice. It's gloved and dropped by Utah as Yoon moves it ahead towards Berg, who fires it across. Pass picked off. Allen skates towards the right circle. Righty shot goes wide. They went stick side on Cranley and missed the net. As Messner feeds out to center ice, Allen gets it back as it bounced off of Berg. Grizzlies skate in one on five as Cutler gets back checked. The Americans took the puck away as Allen skates towards the far side. They get past Cutler. Cutler comes off for a change. As the Americans enter the zone, they get around Burke and taking it Zane Shart. Sharts. He'll throw it around the boards towards the near side. Sharts wearing number 26. He gets the puck on the far corner as he'll start the attack skating from left to right. He moves it out to center ice, a bounce stop, an American stick. Allen gathers the puck as they Feed it out to the near side. Seven and a half minutes left in the first. Still no score. Allen has 10 shots. Grizzlies have five. Americans throw the, to the left side. Centers it out in front. Sharts picks it off, and Sharts flips it high into there. Almost hit the roof as it bounces at the Allen blue line. Americans right wing pass. Spoked away by Utah, but the Americans get it, and they advance it into the zone. Now right circle. Righty shot goes wide. That might have been taken by Pfizer as now the puck along the near boards. As it bounced off a of Pfizer stick, it goes to Mayhew, skates towards the far corner. Mayhew taps it off the boards, gets it himself, and he'll lift it out to the Utah blue line. Allen fires it back to the far corner where Semic gathers it. He'll toss it off a of Sharts. Sharts rolls along the near board. Sharts actually looked pretty good for the Grizzlies. He gets it back, and he has it go past him. Semic in the far corner, backhands it back to Sharts, who will zip it off the near wing wall. As Gallant gets hit, Allen. Throws it towards the slot. Now the Americans veer off to the right circle. Now they skate to the far goal line. Backhand shot saved by Cranley. Stapley gets the rebound. And he'll backhand it past Cole Galan as it went between his legs. The Americans will throw it back in and chase after it. As Sharts, as Allen centers it out in front, Galant picks it off. And he advances it towards Raby as he has a bounce off him. Allen crosses the center ice again. And they'll skip it in as the puck got air under it. And ricocheted off the end boards on one hop of the ice. Allen centers it out in front. It bounced off of Wesley stick, and it flies to center ice as Allen will drift after it, and they get it in their own zone, skating from right to left. Six minutes and counting left in the first, still no score. Allen moves it out to center ice, picked off by Raby, who skated back in, but the Americans took it away. Utah might have been offside as everybody stopped skating with five minutes and 54 seconds left in the first. Still no score on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. When you pay with the Nitro card at Maverick, you always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon, every day. And you could save a whole lot more thanks to Nitro Best Price. Pick up a Nitro card and upgrade your Adventure Club account today. Since 1939, America First has helped people start businesses, buy homes and cars, and achieve their financial goals. Today, our top priority is still the financial success of you and your family, which is why we're giving new members $100 when they sign up for a basic savings and checking account and another $100 when they upgrade to premium checking and enroll in and use direct deposit. So head to AmericaFirst.com today and join the credit union that always puts its members first. Still no score, 554 left in the first period between the Grizzlies and the Americans. Let's look at the shot count. As Allen has taken 12 shots, Grizzlies have six. Nobody on Utah's side has more than one shot. Yoon, Wickers, Raby, 
Burke, Gallant, and Cutler each have one shot for Utah. For the Americans, Blake Murray and Kobe McCauley each have three shots, two shots for Joe Gattenby. We'll take their word for it as the numbers don't really pop off the screen all that well. Grizzlies win the draw. Wesley fires it in as Perry lets it go as it ricochets off the end boards. And now it goes to the near side as the Americans skate from right to left. Grizzlies from left to right here in the first period as we see it on Flow Sports as the Americans still back in their own end. As now Allen zips it across to Chris Mullary, we believe. Mullary will drop it back off as the Americans will move it ahead as it bounced off an Allen stick and it goes into the Grizzly zone far side as May Hugh throws it across to Wesley as Wesley will zip it along the near wing boards. Now Allen gets it out in front. Passes wide of the mark as the Americans haven't gotten that centering pass through to a teammate yet. As the Americans will backhand it off of Mayhew. Pucks around the center ice red line. Allen will gather the puck and they'll skate in as Hank Crone down the middle. Lefty shot kick saved by Cranley who's looked good so far. As Crone will bounce it off of Hume. And now it goes to Dylan Fitz who's been outstanding this road trip. Fitz gains the line right side, will fire it off the end boards as Allen over on the far side gets it. The Americans will carry it out to center ice as Allen gallops into the zone as they'll veer it off to the left as the Americans back in the left point gather the puck as they'll backhand it to the right side as Allen will skate towards their left. Americans Gavin Gould out to the right side, shot saved by Cranley. Allen gets the rebound, they skate around Cranley's net as now Gavin Gould gets it. He's being shadowed by Aragon. Aragon dumped. Gavin Gould to the ice. It's the Americans, Terran Pfizer, high slot, righty shot is blocked away by Yoon. Now another American will backhand it to Pfizer. I think a penalty is called on the Grizzlies. No, it's not. Yes, there is. Delayed penalty on the Grizzlies. Right, left side, righty shot. Saved by Cranley. It's touched up by Yoon. As looks like Aragon's going to get that penalty as he hit Gavin Gould along the boards. So Aaron Aragon's going to get a penalty. Two minutes for cross-checking as there's four minutes and eight seconds left in the first as Aragon looks at himself on the video board and wants to see a replay of what he did. As Aaron Aragon back after serving a two-game suspension, it's the first time he's played against Allen in this series as he gets two minutes for cross-checking with 4.08 left in the first. So the draw is going to be back towards Will Cranley. He's been busy so far. Allen wins the draw. They're on the left point as the Americans skate towards their right. Righty shot goes wide as a ricochets off the end boards as Messner gets it in the far corner and he clears it out. Good hustle by Mick Messner, who's in his first full season as a pro. The Americans gather it and they'll skate out to center ice. The Americans carry it in as Allen drops it back off to the point. Now they get it back to the corner. It's taken away and Utah will sail it all the way towards Chase Perry. Perry gathers it at the side of his net and the Americans will restart, set, will restart the attack. 123 and counting left in their power play, their first of the night. Allen is one for 15 on the power play lately. The Americans have struggled on the man advantage. They spin it towards the right point. The Americans are in the attack zone. Allen to the right side gets it up top, and now the Americans get to the left side as Allen zips it back to the right side. Now back to the high slot. Righty shot saved by Cranley. Grizzlies get it, and they clear it out to center. Utah t hustles after it at center ice. It bounced off a stick. Allen regathers it and skates back into the zone. Americans along the far goal line skate around Cranley's net. Now they get it up top, passes wide of the mark. Grizzlies fit in a line change. 45 seconds left in the power play as Allen's Chris Mullary skates around his net towards the far side. Now Mullary glides towards center ice. And he'll drop it for his left as the Americans skate in. Hank Crone loses the puck. And the puck goes out to the high slot. Malari keeps it in. He gets to Pfizer back to Malari, who fakes a shot and throws it towards the right side as it couldn't be reached. Now it goes back towards, we believe, Chrome over to Malari. It feeds it to the near circle. Utah picks it off, and they clear it out. 15 seconds left in the power play, and 220 and counting left in the first. Still no score. Allen has doubled up Utah on the shot count. Americans gain the line. They'll pitch it out to the right side. Now Allen directs it to the left. Americans, lefty shot. It's blocked by Wesley. Wesley gets it, and he'll toss it off the near boards, and it goes out to center. Grizzlies in control as Aragon got it fresh out of the box. He drops it off for Gallant over to Stapley, who skates down the middle. Stapley veers off to the left circle. Now he drops it off. Lefty shot. Saved by Perry. As Burke had a blast from the left side, but Perry was able to make a glove save and hold on with 155 left in the first. 
But good luck by Nathan Burke, who's got 10 goals this season, which ranks second on the club. Burke played one game in the AHL on New Year's Eve for the Ontario Reign as they played the Henderson Silver Knights. As Perry made a glove save, Perry had a pretty good year last season for the Americans, but has struggled so far this season. 154 left in the first. Allen has outshot Utah 16 to 7. Americans win the draw. They get out to center ice. Grizzlies get it back. Steeply skates towards the right circle. Toe drag. Fires a shot. Perry makes a kick save as Steeply didn't get much on the shot. As the Americans zip it across, and they'll gather it as they cross center ice. Americans get around Steeply. They cross the red line and fire it around the wall as Cranley looks over his right shoulder. As the Americans get pushed by Brian Yoon in the near corner as they tap it up top, but they couldn't keep the zone. As Gatton beat, we'll move it across. Allen will backpedal deep in their own zone, skating from right to left. Now they get back to either Gatton B or Farmer. He moves it to center ice. The Americans will tap it in. Allen chases after it. Brian Yoon, Jordan Ty Fournier will get it to the left point, but nobody was there as it goes deep in the American zone as they hustle after it. And now they skate around Chase Perry's net. Perry wearing a plain white helmet. Left wing pass connects at center ice. The Americans will stop along the near boards. They kick it towards the left circle. Grizzlies poke it back to center. Grizzlies very active with their sticks. They've had an outstanding defensive first period. Allen's been busy with at least 16 shots here in the first. As they move it out to the near side as Allen zips a diagonal pass towards the right. As the Americans drop it off, they skate towards the right circle in the Grizzly zone. Mayhew took it away. Mayhew. We'll move it ahead as Grizzly still on their own end as Dakota Raby will do a half circle. Now Raby carries the puck towards center ice. He backhands it to the corner and chases after it. Allen's Chris Mullary whips it along the wall to the right side as Fitz gets it to Raby in the near corner. As Raby gets around Mullary, as Raby now skates in, shot saved by Perry. Allen gets it off Perry and will move it out to center ice as Wesley in a foot race. As he closes the gap, Allen gets it in the right side as the Americans Skate around Cranley's net. Two seconds left in the period. Lefty shot goes wide. And that will do it for 20 scoreless minutes over at Credit Union of Texas Event Center. And really, it was a period dominated by Allen's shot attempts. As looks like they ended the period with no less than 16 shots in the first frame. But Will Cranley was outstanding in the first period, stopping every shot. Now, both teams had one power play, and neither team was able to convert. A good defensive first period on both sides as we're scoreless after 20 minutes of play at Credit Union of Texas Event Center. I guess you can still make your bid for the Optum first goal of the game as to who's going to score first for Utah. The Allen Americans can say the same as nobody has found the back of the net in a period that was dominated by pretty good defensive performances and good goaltending on both sides. We'll come back and recap the first period and go over some scores from around the world of sports as once again after 20 minutes of play we're scoreless at Credit Union of Texas Events Center. This is Utah Grizzlies Hockey, presented by Rio Tinto Kennecott. to save on top of our lower than low prices. And when you download the Smiths app, you can enjoy over $500 in savings every week with digital coupons and earn fuel points to save up to a dollar per gallon at the pump. With a Boost membership, you'll save even more with double fuel points and free delivery. Discover more ways to save big every day. Smiths. Fresh for From commercial to recreational truck accessories, Mountain Land Truck Outfitters has got what you need. Flatbeds, spray and bed liners, lifts and leveling kits, wheels and tires. Mountain Land Truck Outfitters proudly uses a brand you know and trust. And with our experienced, knowledgeable, and friendly staff, your visit here will be informative and enjoyable. Stop into our convenient location in Provo at 265 South 100 West or call 801-225-4637 to get a quote for your fleet or individual truck. Thanks to Les Schwab Tires, I'm a confident backseat driver, but mom's a little stressed about spending. Remember, breathe in. Now watch your speed and breathe out. Good. 
Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So it's right here. Help keep drivers and backseat drivers safe with Les Schwab Tires. Welcome back to Utah Grizzlies Hockey. I'm Tyson Whiting. I'm hanging out at Maverick Center right next to the Grizzlies team store in the Grizz Cave. The Grizzlies are one time zone to our right, as you would see it on an American map. Grizzlies are at Credit Union of Texas Event Center. And right now we're scoreless after one period. Americans outshot the Grizzlies 16 to 9 in the first period. For the Grizzlies, Dakota Raby and Nathan Burke had two shots. Then five other Grizzlies had one shot on goal, including Brian Yoon, Brett Stapley, Quinn Wickers, Cole Gallant, and Brandon Cutler. For the Americans, they are led by Blake Murray and Colby McCauley. Each guy has three shots. Joe Gattenby, Eric Williams, and Hank Crone each have two shots, and a few other Americans have one shot on goal. Both teams committed one penalty in the first period. Easton Brzezinski got a tripping minor, 322 into the first. And then Aaron Aragon later in the period got a cross-checking minor, 15-52 into the first. Both teams did a good job on the penalty kill. And really, if you're talking about one standout performance in the first period, it was Will Cranley, who stopped all 16 he saw in the first period. And really, he is showing flashes of why the St. Louis Blues signed him to a contract in March of 2022. It was March 2nd of 2022, which is a day he'll never forget. That's when he signed a three-year NHL entry-level contract with the St. Louis Blues. Cranley played in six games earlier this year with the Reading Royals. And today is his seventh game in a Grizzlies uniform. And it seems like with each passing game, he continues to play better and better. So Cranley was a standout performer. He's only 21 years old. He'll be 22 on February 26th. On the Allen side, Chase Perry stopped all nine shots that he saw. But with Perry, really the big thing is the fact that he struggled a bit this year and he was able to make some routine saves early on. And for his sake, he's trying to settle into this contest and it looks like he had done so. Uh, Perry came into play today with a 5.54 goals against average. So obviously in a, goal, a game that featured no goals and only one power play on each side, it's not a ton to talk about, but the standout performances by the two goaltenders in the first period, Cranley for the Grizzlies and Chase Perry for the Americans. Other action in the league, one game has gone final as Trois Rivieres defeats Atlanta 5-2. to two. Corey Thomas, former Grizzly defenseman, had one assist and a plus-one rating for the Lions. He was traded by the Grizzlies a couple weeks ago, and that was just to complete the future considerations part of the deal where the Grizzlies picked up Cole Gallant before the season. Bryson Martin was a plus-two, former Grizzly who's playing for Trois Rivière. Matthew Boucher, the 2021 Rookie of the Year in the league, he had two assists for the Lions as Trois Rivière comes away with a 5-2 to two victory over the Atlanta Gladiators. Atlanta, after starting the season, either 7-0 or 8-0, boy, they've really fallen off a cliff as the Ameri the Atlanta Gladiators are now 13-21-1 on the season. One other game in progress. No score between Adirondack and Newfoundland. That game played at Mary Brown Center. And they're scoreless halfway through the first. Starting at 4 o'clock in the Mountain Time Zone, so about 20 minutes from now, Orlando is at South Carolina. At 5 o'clock, Savannah is at Florida. Greenville is at Jacksonville. Maine is at Reading. Also at 5 o'clock, Norfolk is taking on Worcester. That game played at DCU Center in Worcester. Also at 5 o'clock, Indy is at Wheeling. Kalamazoo is at Toledo. And at 6 o'clock, Iowa is at Tulsa. We'll keep an eye on that game, as obviously in those games where Mountain Division opponents are taking on non-Mountain Division opponents, the Grizzlies obviously will be rooting for the non-divisional opponent to get the victory. So in this case, Grizzlies will be rooting for Iowa, who has a record of 13-16, 4-1. Tulsa is 15-16, 3-3. Also at 6 o'clock, Cincinnati is at Wheeling, and we'll pay special attention to that game for a couple reasons. One, because we, uh, Wichita is one of those Mountain Division opponents going up against a non-divisional team. And the Grizzlies will be in Wichita tomorrow afternoon to take on the Thunder in what will be the third game in three straight days for Wichita, as obviously they played Cincinnati and lost in overtime last night. And they'll play this evening at 6 o'clock 
Uh, but for the Grizzlies, it'll be their fourth game in five days. So it'll be a tough test for the Grizzlies. But obviously, Wichita will not necessarily be a fresh team in their own right going into the contest. A couple games facing off at 7 o'clock. Fort Wayne is at Rapid City, and Kansas City is at Idaho. Kansas City's got a record of 25, 7, and 1, while Idaho is 23, 10, 1, and 1. As Kansas City last night got a late goal to defeat Idaho by a score of 4 to 3. And that was a regulation win for the Mavericks. So Idaho came away with no standings points. And right now, Kansas City has a three point lead over Idaho. In the Mountain Division, Kansas City 51 standings points and a 773 point percentage. Idaho is in second place with 48 points and a 686 point percentage. When we come back, we'll go over some NHL scores as well as give you an update on the Texans and Cleveland Browns NFL playoff game. And we'll have to talk some hockey along the way as well. As over at Credit Union of Texas Event Center, there's no score between the Grizzlies and the Americans. Allen outshot Utah 16-9 in the first period. This is the Grizzlies Hockey Network. When you pay with the Nitro Card at Maverick, you always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon, every day. And you could save a whole lot more thanks to Nitro Best Price. Pick up a Nitro Card and upgrade your adventure. This isn't just copper. It's our job. It's food on our family's tables. Without it, we couldn't stay in touch. It's what keeps our homes warm and our lights on. It's the power behind the team and a greener, brighter future. This isn't just copper. It's a proud Utah and a strong America. Since 1939, America First has helped people start businesses, buy homes and cars, and achieve their financial goals. Today, our top priority is still the financial success of you and your family, which is why we're giving new members $100 when they sign up for a basic savings and checking account, and another $100 when they upgrade to premium checking and enroll in and use direct deposit. So head to AmericaFirst.com today and join the credit union that always puts its members first. Welcome back to Utah Grizzlies hockey as there's no score after one period of play. In the NFL playoffs, looks like late second quarter at the two-minute warning, Houston leads Cleveland 17-14. to That game is played under a retractable roof. I'm not sure if it's open or not as Houston leads Cleveland 17-14. to I haven't seen a single second of that game as obviously the Grizzlies are playing. Looks like Joe Flacco for Cleveland is 14 for 17 passing with 153 yards and one touchdown. Kareem Hunt has one rushing touchdown for the Browns. The Texans have two touchdown passes from C.J. Stroud as he is 10 of 15 passing for 199 yards. What a turnaround the Houston Texans have had as they lead 17 to 14. You talk about a team that really was a disaster over the last three or four years. The Texans have really turned it around, and C.J. Stroud and head coach D'Amico Ryans are certainly a big part of that. Houston leads Cleveland 17-14, to that game with two minutes left in the second quarter. In the Peacock exclusive streaming game at 6 o'clock, it will be the Miami Dolphins and the Kansas City Chiefs meeting at Arrowhead Stadium. Both teams finish the regular year 11-6. and Chiefs are a four-and-a-half-point favorite. And if you're going to that game, bundle up and bundle up big time. The temperature tonight in Kansas City is supposed to be minus 5 degrees. I know when I went to Kansas City a few years ago, I, that's about as cold as I've ever been. There's nothing quite like a Kansas City chilly day. I don't know how either team's going to be able to function tonight with a temperature of minus 5 degrees. And that's going to be a night game that's going to face that's going to start at 610 here in the mountain time zone. And luckily, I'll be able to watch that game eh, unless I buy Peacock. That is maybe I'll listen to the game on Westwood one instead. 
as that should be a fun AFC wild card matchup between the Dolphins and the Kansas City Chiefs. In the NHL, a busy day of hockey. There's three games right now. The rest of them are going to take place in the evening. One game has gone final on national TV on ABC. The Washington Capitals defeat the New York Rangers 3-2. to two. two games in progress right now. Second intermission, Vancouver leads Buffalo 1 to nothing, And also after two periods, Ottawa leads San Jose 4-3. to three. Later on this evening at 4 o'clock, the Devils are at the Panthers. At 5 o'clock, the Penguins are at the Carolina Hurricanes. Seattle is at Columbus. Kings are at the Red Wings. Edmonton is at Montreal. The Grizzlies NHL affiliate, the Colorado Avalanche, they're on the road to take on the Toronto Maple Leafs. That should be a fun matchup. Also at 5 o'clock, Anaheim is at Tampa Bay. And Philadelphia is at Winnipeg. At 6 o'clock, Dallas is at Chicago. Arizona is at Minnesota. Islanders are at the Predators. Boston is at St. Louis. And at 8 o'clock, Calgary is at Vegas to take on the Golden Knights. So a busy evening in the NHL. It's also a busy day in the NBA. Over downtown at 7.30, the Lakers are taking on the Utah Jazz. Looks like the Jazz are a two-and-a-half-point favorite. And how about the turnaround that the Jazz have had after starting, what, something like 4-11? and well, they are now 20 and 20 this season. As they're one of the hottest teams in the NBA. Now, it looks like second period action will get underway here in a few minutes, and we'll come back and have second period action as I'm just hanging out at Maverick Center. Grizzlies are over at Credit Union of Texas Event Center. It's the rubber match as Allen won 5 to 4 on Wednesday night. The Grizzlies last night scored the first six goals of the contest, and they came away with a 6 to 2 victory behind two goals from Dylan Fitz and Brett Stapley. We're still looking for the game's first goal. The first period was certainly highlighted by outstanding goaltending performances by Will Cranley for the Grizzlies and Chase Perry for Allen. We'll come back in two minutes and have second period action. This has been the Rio Tinto Kennecott Intermission Report on the Utah Grizzlies Hockey Network. From commercial to recreational truck accessories, Mountain Land Truck Outfitters has got what you need. Flatbeds, spray and bed liners, lifts and leveling kits, wheels and tires. Mountain Land Truck Outfitters proudly uses a brand you know and trust. And with our experienced, knowledgeable, and friendly staff, your visit here will be informative and enjoyable. Stop into our convenient location in Provo at 265 South 100 West or call 801-225-4637 to get a quote for your fleet or individual truck. Mountain Smith's always gives you more ways to save on top of our lower than low prices. And when you download the Smith's app, you can enjoy over $500 in savings every week with digital coupons and earn fuel points to save up to a dollar per gallon at the pump. With a Boost membership, you'll save even more with double fuel points and free delivery. Discover more ways to save big every day. Smith's fresh for everyone. Thanks to Les Schwab Tires, I'm a confident backseat driver, but mom's a little stressed about spending. Remember, breathe in. Now watch your speed and breathe out. Good. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So turn right here. Help keep drivers and backseat drivers safe with Les Schwab Tires. Welcome back to Utah Grizzlies hockey. It's game six of nine straight on the road for Utah. The Grizz are two and three on the current road trip. I'm really looking forward to this next homestand at Maverick Center. It's a three-game set against the Rapid City Rush. And boy, we got a lot of fun stuff in store. Don't forget the Grizzlies' next home game is going to be on Wednesday, January 24th. It's going to be a Smith family night where it's four tickets for 40 bucks and $10 for each additional ticket. Can't get a good meal for $10 anymore, but you can get a ticket to the Grizzlies game for 10 bucks. So that should be a lot of fun. That's going to be Wednesday, January 24th. That's the Grizzlies' next home game. Second game of that three-game series will be an AFCU Friday where tickets start at $10 when you pay using your AFCU debit or credit card at the Maverick Center box office. And obviously, you're talking about big games. The Guns and Hoses extravaganza will take place on Saturday, January 27th. And with Guns and Hoses Day, there's going to be two, maybe three charity games starting at 1230. And those games will lead up to the Grizzlies game at 710. Don't, now, don't forget, if you get a ticket to the Grizzlies game that night, that also gets you in for all of the charity games that are going to take place. And that should be a lot of fun. Each charity game, it seems like the 
the competition gets tougher and tougher. And that final charity game, well, you talk about good hockey, a lot of intensity. I remember, I remember specifically a ton of penalties being called in the last season's guns and hoses battles. It's going to be a fun one. That's going to be two weeks from now, Saturday, January 27th, the guns and hoses extravaganza at Maverick Center. And you're going to want to get your tickets now because hopefully by the time we hit guns and hoses night, the game will be sold out. Both teams are on the ice. When you see the extreme close-up, you can see the numbers a little bit. There's Chase Perry in net, but when they show that wide shot there to show the action, it's almost impossible to tell who's who. Looks like a pretty good Saturday afternoon crowd has filed into Allen's Credit Union of Texas Events Center. Looks like a much better crowd than they had in either of the first two games of the series. Grizzlies are wearing the cream color jerseys, the alternates that they've mostly worn at home this season, and it's certainly a sharp look. I still got to go to the Grizzlies team store and get one of those jerseys. And I know that during Grizzlies home games recently, we've seen a lot of Grizzlies fans in those cream color jerseys. We'll skate five on five to start the second period. Both teams had one power play in the first 20 minutes as we're still looking for the game's first goal. As 20 minutes are put on the clock grizzlies win the draw they skate from right to left as we see it on flow sports allen skates from left to right grizzlies in the attack zone raby will toss it off an american skate it goes to penner left wing righty shot saved by perry why the puck ended up with penner he was all alone in the near circle took a shot but perry was able to make a glove save we well, talk about a forward line that's really stepped up for the grizzlies this week dylan fitz dakota raby and tyler penner as they started the game, and they start here in the second period with Brian Yoon and Quinn Wickers. Referee tonight is Brendan Schreider, the linesman, Duncan McGarra, and Daniel Barnes. First two games of the series, there were two referees and two linesmen. There's just one referee today. Draw one by the Americans. They're back in their own zone as Penner delivers a shot. As the puck rolls along the near wall for Wickers, he lifts the Penner who couldn't get the puck that was about knee high as the Americans bouncing puck far side will zip it across. It ricochets off the near boards. The Americans still in their own zone as they play a game of slowdown here. As the Americans slow with their approach in their own end, 35 seconds into the period. Allen now zips to the right side as the Americans will backhand it ahead as it bounced off a skate as it goes deep in the Grizzlies zone. As Fitz delivers a shot in the near corner, puck rolls around to the left point. The Americans will backhand it around the wall. Allen behind their net. So they'll skip, skate back towards the left circle. They're around the Utah net as the Americans. Back in the left side, they skate towards their right. Now they get to the right side as the puck bounced off a Johnny Walker stick. Walker will roll it along the wall to the far side. Fitz will tap it out to center ice as the puck skips on the ice. And Allen gathers it deep in their own end. Grizzlies make their first line change of the period. Pass connects, right circle, toe drag, shot. And they didn't get much on it as Mayhew did a great job on the back check. Stapley will rainbow it high into the air. It bounces at center ice off an American arm as Allen, back in their own end, gathered the puck. They will move it ahead to center ice. Gavin Gould crosses the center. Now he gains the line and drops it off as the Americans skate towards the far circle. Take a righty shot. Glove saved by Cranley as he holds on as Johnny Walker pushes Kyle Mayhew after the whistle. And Josh Wesley takes his left glove and says, get out of here, Johnny. As Johnny sporting a mustache, as he'll skate towards his bench. Johnny's one of those guys who'll get out in front of the net. We saw that with the Grizzlies last year, where he had 12 goals and six assists. 18-24 is left in the second period. There's still no scores. Will Cranley has stopped the first 17 that he has seen. As Cutler talking it over with Adam Berg and Kyle Mayhew. Cutler leads the Grizzlies and shots on goal with 116 coming into play this afternoon. As Messner will take the draw, the Merrimack and Wisconsin product. Grizzlies win the draw as Mayhew gets to Wesley, who throws to the left side. Allen, uh, Utah takes it away. Cutler gets to the line, stops on the right point, feeds it out in front, a bounce off of Messner and kicks off a of parry. As Adam Berg along the near side will skate towards a point. Now he gets tripped up. No call on the play as Allen chases after it. Right side, they gather it. Right side, shot, saved by Cranley. Now Allen sending pass, shot, and Cranley gets a piece of that one as well. Boy, Adam, Will Cranley's been a brick wall so far. Adam Berg crosses center ice, and he'll dump it in as Berg chases after it. The Americans roll it along the near wall as Allen gets it back to Neutrice. The Americans cross center. As they get past Jordan Stone, they enter the zone. Messner took it away. 
Messner moves it back to center ice. Stone wasn't looking for the pass as the Americans at the center ice red line. They'll fire it in as Cranley cuts it off behind his net. They'll get it to Mayhew. Back ends it off the near boards as Grizzlies will direct it out to center ice and looking for Stone. It's wide of him. As the Americans angle it towards the near side. It's taken away by Mayhew as he glances back to Allen at the Americans blue line. Allen crosses center ice. They'll carry it in. Left side, they'll skeet towards their right. The Americans skeet towards the slot. Lefty shot, saved by Cranley. And he holds on with 17 minutes and eight seconds left in the second. As that shot, well, we couldn't quite tell who it was on the wide angle. As Gallant and Mayhew will skate off after a good shift. Might have been Hank Crone, who's got a point in 16 straight games. He's out there with Blake Murray. As Murray skates around Eric Williams, looks like Murray will take the draw against Tyler Penner. Both guys wear number 21 for their respective clubs. So draw one by the Americans. As Williams gets over to the left point, Allen rolls along the boards towards the far corner. I think that's Murray. He drops it off as Penner delivers a hit as the Americans skate around Cranley's net towards the near side, looking for a wraparound. It kicks off the pads of Cranley. And now to the right point, Allen. Gets back to the right side, looking for the give and go. It goes up top as the Americans get to Malari. Left side, lefty shot is blocked. Malari gets it back, and he'll toss it off the end wall as the Americans will play catch from one corner to the other. Now Allen's on the far side as three and a half minutes into the second. So they'll move it across as Allen back in the right point. will backhand it around the wall as Wickers lets it go past him. Murray cuts in front of Yoon. Pass towards the far circle, taken away by Fitz. As Fitz will loft it high into the air, bounces at center ice. Raby has a glance off his stick. Penner locating it in the far side, but Allen gets there first. Penner will come off the ice to the end of a good shift. As the pass is angled towards the near side, Allen gains the line and lays it for the right point. But everybody stops skating as the Americans are called for offside as they're 16 08 left in the second period. Colby McCauley on the ice, sporting an A on his sweater. McCauley has eight points against the Grizzlies this season. McCauley and Hank Crone have really been two Americans that have not only played well against the Grizzlies, but played well against everybody. McCauley, 35 points in 33 games, and Crone leads the club with 40 points in only 25 games. Grizzlies win the draw, still scoreless four minutes into the second period. Utah gets the line. Josh Wesley, righty shot goes wide. Now Burke, left side, lefty shot, saved by Perry. And he gathers it and holds on as we get a stoppage of play with 15.55 left in the second. As Burke had a pretty good look, and Chase Perry's done a good job controlling rebounds. In fact, both goaltenders have done a pretty good job controlling rebounds here early on. Tomorrow, the Grizzlies will be in Wichita to take on the Thunder for the only time this season. Utah will be in Wichita. Grizzlies are 2-1 and one against the Thunder this season with a three-game set in early November being played at Maverick Center. Thunder, uh, the uh, the Americans skate in. Utah pokes it away. Stapley back deep in the Grizzly zone to Mayhew back to Stapley, the two Denver products. As puck goes towards Burke, he gets spun around. Burke trying to locate it at his ankles. As the puck ends up with Mayhew, who throws it horizontally to Wesley. Wesley ahead to Stapley. Stapley to the right side. Pass behind Gallant as it ricochets off the far boards. Stapley trying to get it back towards Gallant, and Allen took it away. Americans cross center ice. They skate down the middle. Now they zip it to the left side as Allen tried to get it out in front, but didn't have the angle as the Americans get it back up top. As Allen over to the left side, can't really tell who's who as they skate towards the right side. The Americans, I think that's Taron Pfizer, the former Grizzly, clean shaven. As Pfizer now on the right point, will move it across as Allen over to the high slot. They direct it to the left circle. Allen, five minutes into the second period, get it to the point. Pfizer fakes a shot. Now I'll throw it across off the boards near side. As the Americans get hit by Nathan Burke. Burke does a good job taking him out of the play. Great job by Burke as Utah lifts it out to center ice. Puck bounces and skips towards the Allen blue line. Americans gather it. Gallant at the end of his shift. Pass ahead. Connects. Allen skates towards the left circle. Righty shot. And it goes wide. Cranley might have gotten a glove on it. As play is stopped with 14-31 left in the second. As the puck must have ricocheted out of play. As it bounced off of Cranley. And, boy, what can you say? This is probably the best that Will Cranley has looked in a Grizzlies uniform. And remember that first period that he had to leave due to an injury uh, that was a few weeks ago at Maverick Center against Tulsa. He looked good there as well. 14-31 left in the second. As Cranley's really coming into his own, this in his first season as a pro. As Grizzlies win the draw, as Cutler will move it to center ice and chase after it. Allen gathers it 
As the Americans will backhand it towards center ice. Now it goes back into the Allen zone as they skate down the middle, crossing center ice. Allen directs it to the right side as Gatton B skates around the net. He gets around Sharts as Allen will drop it back to the left point. Americans, righty shot is blocked away by Semek. As the Americans skate back towards the left point, Utah pushes them, but Allen veers off to the right. Now they get to the right circle. As the Americans get blasted by Semek. Aragon over there, three-on-two battle with three Grizzlies over behind Cranley's net as Cranley looks over his left shoulder. Allen comes out of the pile with a the puck. They try to center it, and it bounced off a Grizzly skate. Allen gets the puck back. So they skate towards the near side. And 13.45 left in the second. They'll move it across to the left point. Allen feeds to the far circle. Now the Americans get to the high slot. Righty shot saved by Cranley. Rebound goes to the near corner as Allen moves it up top. It bounced off of Berg. As the Americans keep the puck over on the far side, they lose it as Aragon will cross center ice. He gets it to Cutler. Cutler has a tap off his stick, and it goes back to the Utah blue line. As Semek hustles after it, he gathers the puck as he'll advance to center ice for Cutler. Cutler skates in along the near boards as he'll throw it to the right circle. Penner with a shot that goes wide as Penner's out there with Berg and Cutler as the puck goes out to center ice on a diagonal feed as Allen. Moves it ahead towards the Utah blue line. Wickers took it away. Wickers has been a plus performer for the Grizzlies here over the last month. He gets it ahead as the Grizzlies carry it into the zone. Penner across the right side for Raby, who swings and didn't get much on a one-timer. As now Raby's on the left side. He'll skate towards his right. Allen pokes it away. Raby trying to reach for it. And now it's guided out to center ice. Two on two, the Americans lay it out to the left circle. Allen bounced it off a of unit. It goes to Raby as Raby throws it to center ice. It's taken away by the Americans. Chris Mullary skates back into his own zone as we're seven and a half minutes into the second period. Still no score. Allen backhands it into the Grizzly zone. It's taken by Yoon. who will move it out to center ice. Bouncing puck is taken by Fitz. He'll skate towards the right circle. Slap shot saved by Perry. As Fitz trying to reenact that game-winning goal he scored on January 5th against Newfoundland, a very similar-looking play. This time, Perry was able to make the body save, and like he's done all game, he's done a good job controlling the rebounds. We got a goaltender's duel over in Allen. 12 minutes, 20 seconds left in the second. Still no score on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. Commercial direct racial truck accessories. Mountain Land Truck Outfitters has got what you need. Flatbeds, spray and bed liners, lifts and leveling kits, wheels and tires. Mountain Land Truck Outfitters proudly uses a brand you know and trust. And with our experienced, knowledgeable, and friendly staff, your visit here will be informative and enjoyable. Stop into our convenient location in Provo at 265 South 100 West or call 801 225 4637 to get a quote for your fleet or individual truck. Mountain Land Truck Outfitters. We have 12 minutes and 20 seconds left in the second period. There's still no score. Utah has outshot Allen 4-3 to three here in the second period. Americans, however, have a 19-14 to 14 edge. Dakota Raby and Nathan Burke each have three shots to lead the Grizzlies. Brandon Cutler has two. Colby McCauley leads Allen with four shots on goal. Both teams are 0-for-1 in the power play. As we're still looking for the game's first goal, Utah is 10-3 when scoring first this season. As live action going on, as now the puck is in the Grizzlies zone, as looks like the camera operator went to lunch, as the Americans throw it to the far circle, Utah gathers it, Wesley will angle it out to the left side, it goes deep in the American zone, Chase Perry will pitch it out to the right side, as the Americans over in the far corner of their own zone, they skate from left to right, as the puck deflects out of play with Stapley and Burke in the area, it tapped off the glass, so no delay of game, the draw is going to be in the American zone as the Grizzlies wearing their cream-colored th- alternate jerseys with green number, a uh, green number in the back and black trim. Pretty sharp-looking jersey. It's became a becoming a fan favorite as Blake Murray and Kobe McCauley skate towards the bench. Stapley will take the draw. He's got a point in eight straight games. And taking it for Allen is Grant Abear. Even on the close-ups, the jerseys are tough to spot. 
As the Americans will tap it off the near boards, it goes to center ice. That's why we haven't been specific with names. A bear gains the line and he'll move it across to the left circle. Now it's dropped off as the Americans skate towards the far side. Now they move it across as Ganyan will throw it off the wall as it rolls along to the far side. Mayhew in the area so steeply. Now to the left circle, lefty shot saved by Cranley to deflects off him and goes out of play with 11.27 left in the second. Boy, the Americans had a pretty good look from the left side, but Cranley comes through again. As Wesley talking things over, as Taron Pfizer handles the puck, and he'll get it to one of the linesmen. Pfizer will skate towards the bench at the end of his shift. As Grizzlies get Brandon Cutler in there with Aaron Aragon and Mick Messner. Messner will take the draw as Messner talks with Brian Yoon. As Aragon and Yoon stand next to each other. There's a draw one by the Grizzlies as Yoon, far corner, moves it across, but didn't get much on it as it goes to Aragon and moves to Cutler across the center ice down the middle. Cutler veers off to the left. He steps over the line and taps it off the end boards. Messner gets cut off as the Americans will bounce to the right point, kept in. Lefty shot is blocked away. As momentum goes all the way into the Grizzlies zone. Cranley out of his net towards the far circle. As he'll get to Wickers, who moves it to the right point. Allen keeps it in. They fire towards the net. It goes wide as Allen. Over in the left circle, centers it out in front as Chrome fires a shot, saved by Cranley. Rebound goes to Utah. Cutler left wing pass to Aragon, who crossed the center ice. Aragon throws it in as he had to get around the linesman. Aragon collides with an American deep in their zone as Perry looks over his right shoulder. As the Americans in the near side get pushed by Aragon. Messner in the area as two-on-two battle. Aragon delivers a push as the puck goes out to Allen behind their net. As the Americans skating from left to right, Messner... Challenges the play. Allen gets it back. They zip it ahead. Two on two. Left circle. Americans drop it off to the right side. Righty shot. Kick save by Cranley. What a stop by Will as the Americans get it back up top to the right side. Grizzlies gather it. Cutler clears it out. As the puck moves out to center ice, as the pass connected to Fitz, Fitz gets it towards Semek, who delivers it across looking for Sharts, and Allen got a stick in the way, intercepting the pass. As the Americans back deep in their own zone, spread the ice. As the Americans... We'll move it out. Long-range pass doesn't connect. Cranley to the side of his net plays it. And he'll get it towards Mayhew, who skates around the net. Mayhew with good speed. He gets to neutralize. Now he crosses center. Now he moves to head. Grizzlies in the zone. High slot. Righty shot is blocked away by Perry. As Raby over in the area. I think Penner was the one that took that shot. If it's not Penner, it was Fitz. Raby gets held up along the boards. Allen gathers it. Penner trying to take it away, and he does. Penner over to Fitz in the slot. As Fitz gets back checked, Allen took it away as the Americans will carry it out to center ice. Allen gains the line as they skate towards the far corner. Wesley in the area. As the Americans get pushed in the near side, Wesley gets a stick in the way and moves it out to Raby, who crosses the center ice with speed. Raby gains the line. They'll skate towards the corner. He gets around an American. Allen will gather the puck as they get to neutralize. Allen crosses the center. Now they skate down the middle. Great poke check, but Allen's able to get it. Shot saved by Cranley. Now starting pass. Shot and a score. As the Americans have taken a 1-0 lead. And I think it's Easton Brzezinski. Brzezinski gets his 16th of the year and 6th against the Grizzlies. As, boy, the puck was poked away towards the slot. And Cranley was out of position as the puck kind of pinballed a little bit. As the Americans skated towards the left side, Cranley poked it away. And then the Americans got it down the middle. Cranley was looking towards his right and didn't react quick enough for Brzezinski, who put, who put it away. So Easton Brzezinski gets his 16th of the year and six against the Grizzlies. As with 9.03 left in the second period, the game has its first goal, and it's the Allen Americans on top. As the draw is going to be at center ice, Brzezinski is going to get the goal. Oddly enough, when they turn the lights out, you can see the numbers just fine. <laughs> Grizzlies enter the zone as Stapley Skate starts his right. Righty shot goes wide as he went low on Chase Perry. Puck to the left side. Wickers fires towards the net. It goes wide as Stapley was trying to redirect it. Stapley gallops after it on the far side. He'll skate towards his left. He loses the puck as it goes to the point. Stapley hustles after it and gets to Wickers in the corner. Wickers near side gets pushed and held along the wall as Sharts loses his balance. Puck goes back to Allen. They ricochet off the end boards. The puck glides towards the near point as the Americans, Chris Mullary, will fire it across as the Americans... Enter the zone on a blue line to blue line pass. Utah will move it back to center as the puck glides all the way towards Perry, who fires it off the far wing boards as Messner in the area. As Messner challenges down, big time hit delivered by Messner on, I believe, Chris Mullary. As Americans 
Guide it towards the near corner. They tap it off a Grizzly skate. It goes to Wesley High slot. Righty shot. Saved by Perry. And he holds on with 8.05 left in the second. As the Americans took a 1-0 lead on Easton Brzezinski's 16th of the year. The assist on the goal went to Grant Bear and Chris Maleri. We'll come back in one minute. 8.05 left in the second period. Allen leads 1-0 on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. Smith's always gives you more ways to save on top of our lower than low prices. And when you download the Smith's app, you can enjoy over $500 in savings every week with digital coupons and earn fuel points to save up to a dollar per gallon at the pump. With a Boost membership, you'll save even more with double fuel points and free delivery. Discover more ways to save big every day. Smith's fresh for every. Thanks to Les Schwab Tires, I'm a confident backseat driver, but mom's a little stressed about spending. Remember, breathe in. Now watch your speed and breathe out. Good. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So it's right here. Help keep drivers and backseat drivers safe with Les Schwab Tires. Eight minutes and five seconds are left in the second period. Allen leads one to nothing as Easton Brzezinski scored 10.57 in with Grant Abair and Chris Maleri gained the assist. For Maleri, it's his 24th helper of the year, and for Abair, it's his fourth assist. Draws in the Allen zone, and the Americans get it, and they'll sell it ahead. Americans over to the right side. I think that's Hank Crone. He skates in the right point and stops in the circle as he gets double teamed as the puck rolls towards Cranley and kicks to the near corner as Maleri uh, make that Mayhew get set. As Allen tries to feed it out in front, it bounces off the side of the net. Grizzlies gather it as Messner throws to Cutler in the right wing. Cutler crosses center ice and they'll tap it off the corner. Messner chases after it and gets it to Berg, who gets held up behind Allen's net. Americans come away with the puck. Seven and a half minutes left in the second. As Utah skates from right to left here in the period, Allen gains the line on a diagonal pass. As the Americans get it to the far goal line, shot hits the side of the net. Now Allen throws it out in front. It bounced off of Mayhew as it goes towards Berg who sails it towards the Grizzlies' net. It's taken by Sharts. As Zane Sharts gets to Mayhew, as Mayhew moves it ahead along the left wing for Berg. It bounced off of him towards Mayhew, who gets it back. Now Mayhew moves it ahead to Berg as it bounced off his stick, and it goes back to the Americans with seven minutes left in the second. Allen still in their own zone. They get around Brandon Cutler. Allen flies across center ice. Americans skate down the middle. Righty shot saved by Cranley. The Grizzlies brush it back towards the near boards. Cutler. We'll push it to the right side as the puck bounced off of the and the uh, far wall near the Grizzlies bench. Allen, diagonal pass doesn't connect. Grizzlies chase after it. Does Sharts, and it's going to be icing on the Americans as Zane Sharts out there. And now we get Dakota Raby who's being attacked at center ice. As Easton Brzezinski and Dakota Raby, well, it looked like Raby was just skating towards center ice, and the referee tells both guys to go to the penalty box. Now Brzezinski, with his glove, throws a punch at Raby. As I don't know what Raby said to Brzezinski, but Brzezinski got really hot at Dakota Raby. And both Brzezinski and Raby are going to the penalty box. Brzezinski looks like he was a lot more animated than Dakota Raby was. As icing was called on the Americans, now Brzezinski yells at Raby some more. As Brzezinski gets his stick, as his stick looks like it was broken. Maybe Raby broke his stick. I don't know. <laughs> Either way, Brzezinski looked like he was hot. As Brzezinski gets two minutes, and I believe so does Raby. As referee is pointing to both guys to go to the box, yeah, Raby's in there for the Grizzlies as well. I wonder, though, if Brzezinski was a little, little bit more heated than Raby was. And Brzezinski throwing that right punch around the linesman towards Raby if he's going to get an extra two minutes, which would give the Grizzlies a power play. Uh, based on what we saw, and obviously we don't get to see everything, it's, may, you know, it's possible that the Grizzlies could get an extra two-minute power play as a result. You know, Maybe it'd be a double minor for Brzezinski, and Raby would just get a minor. So both teams are towards their bench area. As a referee, I believe, is talking with both teams. This is a different referee than what we had in the first two games of the series. Brendan Schreiber, it's the first time he's seen either team in this series. The linesmen are Duncan McGarra and Daniel Barnes. So it looks like it might be a two-minute power play for the Grizzlies. The draw is going to be 
in the Allen zone. It was going to be in the Allen zone anyway, as Allen was called for icing. And so it looks like it's possible the Grizzlies are going to get a power play. As two minutes are put in the score bug, but nothing is there for Utah. So it is a power play for the Grizzlies. Stapley, Gallant, and Burke are up front. Can't tell who the two defensemen are. I believe it's Mayhew and Wesley. As Allen is kicked out of the faceoff circle, Mikel Robido out there as one of the forwards. Looks like Robido will take the draw. 639 left in the second. Robido will crouch down. Stapley wins the draw cleanly. Mayhew in the right point gets it, and he moves to Stapley. Stapley switches places with Mayhew. Stapley's now on the right side. He gets it to the far goal line. Grizzlies, Nathan Burke back towards Stapley. He directs it to Mayhew, who guides it back towards Stapley. Stapley over to Burke in the far circle. As Burke up top looking for Mayhew, passes wide of the mark as it ricochets to center ice off the near wing wall. As Mayhew with a left wing pass diagonal to Wesley, who drops it back off for Burke, who crosses center ice. Burke gains the line. He veers to the left circle, stops along the near wall, and gets it up top to Mayhew, who directs it towards Wesley. Back to Mayhew. Allen leads one to nothing as Wesley gets it. Now throws it back to Mayhew as both guys play catch. Now Mayhew plays catch with Stapley as he gets to the right circle. Stapley backhands it to Mayhew who fires a lefty shot and gets redirected. Burke hacking away. Puck's still alive, but it kicks towards the far corner. Gallant gets it back to Stapley. We're halfway through Utah's power play as Mayhew over to Wesley, left side, righty shot, saved by Perry. And after the whistle, Robido went after Nathan Burke. And now Robido and Josh Wesley really getting after it in front of the net. Robido throws two lefts as he has lost his cool again. As now the linesman holds up Robido's left arm. Robido sporting blood as I'm sure the Grizzlies must have done something there. As now Roby Doe, well, that might be a mouth guard and instead of blood. As boy, after the whistle, you talk about there's one thing protecting your goalie, and then there's another to really go after somebody. Roby Doe is looking at his left hand as he threw two punches at Josh Wesley. As it looked like initially, Roby Doe was pushing Nathan Burke for no reason, and then Roby Doe just lost his cool and started throwing lefts at Wesley. That's got to be more than two minutes. That's got to be something where you get a misconduct or something there. As obviously both guys, now there's three there's three players in the Allen penalty box. You're talking about a critical sequence here. Wesley's in the box for Utah as well. So Raby and Wesley are in the Utah box. There's three Allen Americans that are in the box as well. As after the whistle, Robido started pushing Nathan Burke. And then Josh Wesley took up because, you know, I don't think Wesley thought there was really any reason that Burke should be pushed other than the fact that Burke was in front of the goaltender, Perry, you know, making sure he was in the right place at the right time in case Perry allowed a rebound. Uh, Perry has not allowed too many rebounds here so far, uh, but we only see three on the ice for Allen. It's a five on three power play for a minute as the Grizzlies win the draw. They trail one nothing. Yoon over to the right side. One timer saved by Perry. As Grizzlies will throw it back towards the near side as Messner gets up top for Yoon. Yoon back to the right side. Grizzlies on a five on three power play. They trail one nothing. Over to Messner on the left side. Back to Yoon. He fires a righty shot. It bounced off a couple bodies and flies out of play off the protective netting. As Fitz was net front trying to redirect it, and we stop play with five eighteen left in the second. So it looks like a five-on-three power play for the Grizzlies for the next 40 seconds as Utah did a good job. It was Cutler on the one-timer. Perry lost his balance, looked like the shot went wide, and then Aragon threw it towards an air side as they show a replay. And now it's a five-on-four power play. There's four Americans on the ice as Yoon over to the right side. Cutler, one-timer, and it goes wide as Messner will get it to the near corner. Allen gathers it, and they clear it out as it went over Yoon's head. And now everybody stops skating with 29 seconds left in what is a five-on-four power play. Well, I thought for a second it was five-on-three. Obviously, we're missing some of the details, um, you know, but we're not sure if there was actually four on the ice for Allen, and one of the guys was hidden. Ryan Gagnon out there with Jordan Ty Fournier. They're at the end of their shift as Gavin Gould will skate towards the bench as well. 29 seconds left in a five-on-four power play. Draws give me in the near circle. Watch out for Brandon Cutler, who has four power play goals this year. Allen leads one to nothing as Messner will take the draw for the Grizz. Fitz and Aragon are up front. Yoon and Cutler on the back end. So four forwards and one defenseman on this shift. As a draw won by the Americans towards the end boards. A fan on it. Hacking away is Fitz. Perry makes a save. 
Fitz trips up an American. Is a call being made? No. Yoon over to Cutler. One-timer. Saved by Perry. Grizzlies hack away. Puck still in play. Penalty is going to be called on the Americans. Cutler right side, lefty shot. Saved by Perry. Perry doesn't have a stick. Grizzly fire shot and hits the post. As Yoon gets as uh, Perry gets back to his feet. Yoon across to Cutler. One-timer. Saved by Perry. And now Perry's laying down. As I think a penalty was called on the Americans who got pretty aggressive after they thought that the Grizzlies had bumped Perry. Now Messner gets dragged down. Boy, that's a cheap shot by McCauley as Messner's now on the ice and Allen is pushing him towards the ice. As Eric Williams really got aggressive with Mick Messner and then Kobe McCauley, I think, helped get Messner towards the ice. Eric Williams yelling as well. Mick Messner arguing his case. So you talk about protecting the goaltender, and they're doing it to the extreme. As Perry had bobbled the puck, and then Fitz was looking for the rebound, then Fitz got pushed into Perry, and then everybody's pushing in the crease. There's about six or seven bodies there. And then Messner looked like Messner and Eric Williams held each other up, and then McCauley just pushed down Messner, and then Williams helped keep Messner on the ice, just kind of pushing him along the ice. Two seconds left in the five-on-four power play. Messner's in the box for Utah. There's now three Grizzlies in there, and I think there's three or four Allen Americans in the box as well. As the Americans lead one to nothing. So, yeah, there's a complete forward line right there in the penalty box. Messner, Raby, and Wesley. Wesley, a defenseman, of course, I guess. So it'd be two forwards and one defenseman in the box. And for Allen, they're not showing the Americans penalty box. There's probably three or four guys in there as well. Brzezinski's penalty has two seconds left. As they don't want to show the people in the Allen box, but they certainly are fixated on the three guys in the box for Utah. Messner, Raby, and Wesley. The only goal so far is Easton Brzezinski as he found the back of the net. A little bit more than halfway through the contest and halfway through the second period. It was 10.57 in with Hebert and Maleri getting the assists. So I'm sure the referee, Brendan Schreider, is talking with both coaches as he sees this game starting to get out of control a little bit. Draws going to be in the American zone. There's Chase Perry there with the plain white helmet. As we're trying to really count the bodies, see how, who's out there. It looks like five on the ice for the Grizzlies right now, and I think there's like – Williams didn't get a penalty. Thought there might have been. I think there's four for Allen. I think Messner might have gotten the only penalty there as it's a five-on-four power play for two seconds. Then we'll skate five-on-five. Five. It's a draw one by the Americans as Brzezinski's out of the box. We're skating five-on-five. Five. Gallant gets the puck in the far circle. So Gallant veers back towards the point. Now he gets to Yoon who taps it to the left side for Wickers. Now Burke back towards Stapley. He's on the left side of Stapley, gets it across. Yoon gathers it right side. He'll take a right shot. He scores! Brian Yoon gets his third of the year, and the Grizzlies have tied it up with 419 left in the second. As Yoon near the Grizzlies bench, high fives everybody. As Utah's bench is fired up as Brian Yoon just connected on an old-school slap shot past Chase Perry. Burke was in the area. It looked like it bounced off of somebody. Either Burke, it bounced off of Burke or it got redirected by an American as it went past Chase Perry. 419 left in the second. And it looks like a penalty has been called on Kobe McCauley as two minutes are put on the, the scoreboard clock. As Colin Jacobs arguing as well. So it looks like the Grizzlies might get a power play here as we're tied at one. And the Allen Americans who lead the league in penalty minutes uh, have a few in the box right now. Draws going to be at center ice. As we're tied at one. It looks like McCauley's being escorted towards the box. He doesn't agree with it. As McCauley will enter into the Rogers and Russell Legal Solutions holding cell. And so there's a few Allen Americans. McCauley punches the glass with his right hand. There's four guys in the penalty box for the Allen Americans. As we're not sure what McCauley did, we didn't see the referee signal, but he looks like he is hot. As we've had quite a few penalties here in the last couple minutes. 
This looks like 14-22, and Wesley and Robido got matching roughing minors. Messner and Murray got matching roughing minors. And now McCauley's in the box, and the Grizzlies start a power play. Puck goes towards Cranley. He stops it in the crease, keeps the play alive as he gets to McMet to Kyle Mayhew. We're tied at one after Brian Yoon scored his third of the year. Grizzlies enter the zone as Mayhew gets pushed along the near boards as Cutler battles Burke in the area. Arm is raised by the referee. There's going to be a penalty, and I think it's going to be a makeup call as Grizzlies are now going to the box. As It looked like they were just battling along the near wall, and 25 seconds into the power play, it's over. As Now it looks like a penalty has been called on the Grizzlies. McCauley is in the box for a roughing minor. It happened 15-41 in, and now it looks like it's Nathan Burke that gets two minutes in the box for Utah. So we'll skate four on four for a minute and 35 seconds, then Allen will have an abbreviated power play after that. Draws give me in the Grizzly zone with three minutes and 53 seconds left in the second. As Brian Yoon tied it up with his third of the year, unless they say it got redirected by Burke. As a draw won by the Grizzlies, as they skate from right to left, as they're deep in their own zone. Brian Yu, who's been a plus performer for the Grizzlies, gets it to Stapley. Stapley gets taken away. One on three in the far side. Stapley drags down an American. It goes to Yoon, who saucers it across to Wickers, who skates behind Utah's net. As Wickers gets action initiated by the Americans, as Wickers moves ahead to the right side, now back to Yoon down the middle. Yoon gains the line, veers off to the right side. He fires towards the net as the puck skips towards the near corner. As the Americans back checked by Stapley, they cross center ice. Utah pokes it away. Great job by Cole Gallant. As Stapley gains the line, he stops in the slot, moves to Wickers. As the puck bounced off of Wickers, he gets it in the near corner. And now Gallant gets it back up top for Stapley. Back to Wickers in the far goal line. As Wickers bounced it off an American. Now Allen gets it. They cross center ice, two on two. Americans left wing pass the end of the zone. Yoon pokes it away. Allen regathers it. As the Americans back in their own end, zip it to the left side. Americans left circle. The righty shot saved by Cranley. Rebound shot saved by Cranley again. As now Yoon gets to Wickers along the near side. 28 seconds left in the four on four before Colby McCauley will come out of the box. It's Grizzlies moving out to center ice. Stapley gains the line, stops in the right point. Allen took it away. As Burke got a hooking minor, 16.07 in. That's why he's in the box. 2.30 is left in the second. Diagonal pass connects. Allen skates down the middle. Good job by Semic cutting him off as the Americans back on the right side. Have three seconds left in the four-on-four. Four. As Allen drops it off, as goes back towards Hank Crone. He gets to the left side. One-timer to score. And that's Taron Pfizer getting his first in an American's uniform as he pounds the glass in celebration. As Pfizer looks like he has given the Americans a two to one lead. As Chrome was in the right side, just got it across to Pfizer, and Pfizer's one timer looked like it might have gone between Cranley's arm or right under his arm on the left side. As Pfizer had 27 goals for the Grizzlies last year, gets his first for the Americans. And luckily for the Grizzlies, it looks like. Well, it was pretty close to the time where Allen's McCauley came out of the box that would have made it a power play goal, which would then make this five on five. I think McCauley had come out of the box just before Pfizer had scored. So it looks like the power play is over, and they call it a power play goal as McCauley will skate towards the bench. And I think that means that the Grizzlies can get Burke out of the box. As we are skating five on five. It's 2-1 Americans, as it turns out to be a power play goal scored by Taron Pfizer. Deep in the Allen zone, as we're about two minutes left in the second period. Americans near side, Chris Mullary gets to center ice. And looking for the puck is Mayhew as the puck rolls towards Cranley. It's taken by Wesley, who skates around Utah's net. And big time hit delivered by Wesley. Far side, Penner holds up an American two-on-two battle. Is Mayhew in the area as the puck kicks towards the left point. Americans still in the attack zone as they skate towards the far circle. As Allen gets pushed by Wesley, as the Americans, Wesley tries to poke it away, but Allen keeps the puck. As Hank Crone, we believe, throws it to the left side, now across. As Allen will get it back towards the left side. Americans skate towards their right with a minute and a half left in the second period. Righty shot is poked away as puck ended up near Cranley. Now near corner, Allen gets it up top. Now they slide it to the left side. Americans, left wing, righty shot goes wide as it ricochets off the boards. As Allen towards right point, they get pushed down by Wesley, who's been very physical here in the second period. Now somebody's going after Josh Wesley, and it looks like we're going to get a fight. 
107 left in the second, as looks like the Americans were very aggressive at Josh Wesley. Johnny Walker in particular, as Walker now yelling at the Grizzlies bench. And the linesman's telling Walker to go to the bench. As Walker sporting a mustache. As looks like Josh Wesley playing a pretty physical second period, and the Americans are a bit riled up. Two minutes in the box for Ty Farmer. As, boy, away from the picture that we see, it's possible Farmer went after Josh Wesley. We don't seem to get many replays on this particular video board, this particular screen. The Terran Pfizer goal was assisted by Hank Crone and Eric Williams. That means that Crone extends his point-scoring streak to 17 games. Colin Jacobs out in the ice as the Grizzlies have a two-minute power play. There's one minute, seven seconds left in the second. We'll go over all this since there seemed to be a lot that's happened here over the last six minutes. We'll go over all of it during the second intermission. Right now, the Grizzlies have a power play trying to tie it up. Allen leads 2-1. to one. They win the faceoff and sail it all the way towards Cranley along the far wing boards. As Cranley behind his net, we'll move it ahead to the far side as Grizzlies skate from right to left. Mayhew gets the neutral ice and drops it off steeply over to Burke, who crosses the center ice. Burke veers off to the left as he steps over the blue line. Burke over to the right side, wide open, righty shot. And it bounces off of Cranley's glove and goes wide. As Wesley, over in the near corner, gets up top to Mayhew. Now across to Stapley. Now to the far goal line for Burke, back to Stapley. who directs it to Mayhew. He slides to Wesley, who gets it down the middle for Gallant. And Gallant swung and missed. Now Allen gathers it near side, and the Americans sell it to center ice. Mayhew gets tripped up, and the Americans throw it all the way deep in the Grizzlies zone. I don't think a call is going to be made there, as there's now 110 left in the Grizzlies power play. 15 seconds left in the period. As Grizzlies, Kyle Mayhew gets around. He gets hooked and no call. Allen takes the puck. As Burke delivers a hit, Mayhew gets it back. Five seconds left in the period. Far side pass towards Stapley. He gets it ahead. They try to get it back to Stapley in the give and go. Allen takes it away, and that'll do it for 40 minutes. Over at Credit Union of Texas Event Center, what a spirited second half of the second period it turned out to be. Allen leads 2-1 to one as they got goals from Easton Brzezinski and Taryn Pfizer. Grizzlies got a second period goal from Brian Yoon. We'll come back and recap the first two periods. Boy, a lot of spirit here on the rubber match. On Wednesday night, it was a 5-4 Allen victory. The Grizzlies responded by winning 6-2, and the linesmen are telling the Grizzlies to make sure the Americans get to the locker room first before they let Utah go towards their locker room. We'll come back and recap the first twenty minute, the first 40 minutes. Once again, the score is Allen 2, Utah 1. This is the Grizzlies Hockey Network. When you pay with the Nitro card at Maverick, you always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon, every day. And you could save a whole lot more thanks to Nitro Best Price. Pick up a Nitro card and upgrade your Adventure Club account. This isn't just copper. It's our job. It's food on our family's tables. Without it, we couldn't stay in touch. It's what keeps our homes warm and our lights on. It's the power behind the team and a greener, brighter future. This isn't just copper. It's a proud Utah and a strong America. Since 1939, America First has helped people start businesses, buy homes and cars, and achieve their financial goals. Today, our top priority is still the financial success of you and your family, which is why we're giving new members $100 when they sign up for a basic savings and checking account and another $100 when they upgrade to premium checking and enroll in and use direct deposit. So head to AmericaFirst.com today and join the credit union that always puts its members first. A lot of spirit over at Credit Union of Texas Event Center. Grizzlies is going to be on the power play for the, for the first 53 seconds of the second period as Ty Farmer got an unsportsmanlike conduct minor, 18-53 into the second. We'll recap all the scoring and penalties from the second period on the other side as Allen leads Utah 2-1 on the Grizzlies Hockey Network.
commercial direct racial truck accessories, Mountain Land Truck Outfitters has got what you need. Flatbeds, spray and bed liners, lifts and leveling kits, wheels and tires. Mountain Land Truck Outfitters proudly uses a brand you know and trust. And with our experienced, knowledgeable, and friendly staff, your visit here will be informative and enjoyable. Stop into our convenient location in Provo at 265 South 100 West or call 801-225-4637 to get a quote for your fleet or individual truck. Mountain Land Truck Outfitters. Welcome back to Utah Grizzlies Hockey. Second intermission over at Credit Union of Texas Event Center. The Allen Americans lead Utah 2-1. to one. Nobody scored in the first half of the contest, but then Allen responded as Easton Brzezinski got a 16th of the year with Grant Abair and Chris Maleri getting the assist. The time of that goal, 10:57 in. And for Easton Brzezinski, well, he's been a Grizzlies killer as it's a sixth goal against Utah this season. He has 16 goals since uh, his first goal of the season came on December 8th, and then he scored two others that same game. He ended up with a hat trick. So he's got 16 goals, but all 16 of them have come after December 7th. So he's really been a top performer for them, and he's got the first goal of the game. Grizzlies responded with the what looks to be a five-on-five goal that was scored by Brian Yoon, 15-40 in. You scored from the right side as Grizzlies were looking to redirect it. Burke was in the area and it bounced off of somebody. It wasn't a clean goal in terms of the, the you know getting towards the net without it bouncing off of something. It might have bounced off an American as Yoon gets the goal his third of the year with Stapley and Nathan Burke getting the assist. And it's important to note that Stapley got the assist because that means his point scoring streak extends to nine games. And for Nathan Burke, he now has an assist in two straight, and he has 11 on the season. Later on in the second period, skating five on four, it was just after a four on four situation. Kobe McCauley came out of the box in three seconds after McCauley came out of the box serving a roughing minor. Taryn Fizer, the former Grizzly, scored on a one timer from the left circle that got past Will Cranley. Tough to tell whether it went under Cranley's arm or if it went over it. Either way, it just got through for Pfizer's first in an Allen uniform. He had 27 goals for the Grizzlies last year. Hank Crone got an assist, and that's of note because his point scoring streak extends to 17 games. And former Grizzly defenseman Eric Williams also picked up an assist on the Pfizer goal. Williams now has 13 assists this season. So Allen gets a 2-1 to one lead going into the third period. Utah will have a 53-second power play to start the third period. In the first period, Allen outshot Utah 16 to 10. In the second period, the Grizzlies outshot the Americans 15 to 11. So through two periods, Allen has 27 shots and the Grizzlies have 25. Utah right now is 0 for 4 on the power play. I think they're still going on with their fourth power play of the game. Allen is 0 for 2. Seemed like the game was going pretty mildly. There was only one penalty on each side in the first period. However, in the final seven minutes of the second period, action really picked up physically. After all, it's the last meeting of the regular season, so whatever beef they've got to settle, they've got to do so here today. Dakota Raby and Easton Brzezinski got matching roughing minors. Actually, Raby got two minutes for roughing, then Brzezinski got four minutes for roughing. So that's why Utah ended up with a two-minute power play. They only had the power play for about a minute before Josh Wesley uh, got a roughing minor, but so did Mikael Robido. So the Grizzlies were able to stay on the power play as matching roughing minors were called by Wesley and Robido. That was 14 22 into the second period. That's the one where it looked like Robido was pushing Nathan Burke because Burke was just in front of the net looking for a rebound. And then Josh Wesley took up for his teammate. Robido lost his cool and threw a few punches, a couple without his glove on. And then Robido was looking at his hand afterwards. It's kind of surprising considering that it looked like Robido was much more aggressive than Wesley, that um, they just gave Robido two minutes and Wesley also with two minutes. So those uh, those penalties offset. Then Mick Messner got a roughing minor, 15-20 in. But then, then again, so did Blake Murphy. So matching roughing minors, 15-20 in. And then uh, McCauley got a roughing minor, 15-41 in. I think by that point, it became a five-on-four power play. And then Nathan Burke got a hooky minor, 16.07 in. And they gave us four-on-four action for over a minute and a half. Then when McCauley came out of the box, 17.41 in, 
Pfizer scored the goal three seconds later. And then later in the second period, Ty Farmer got an unsportsmanlike conduct minor, 18.53 into the second. There's going to be a quiz on all that during the postgame show. As Allen leads 2-1, to one, in terms of shots for the Grizzlies, Nathan Burke and Brandon Cutler are each tied for the club lead with five. Dakota Raby has three shots, two, shot, two shots each for Brian Yoon, including one goal. Yoon is a plus one today. Of course he is. He is now a plus 10 against the Americans this season. Stapley and Gallant also had two shots in the first two periods and one shot each for Messner, Wickers, Fitz, Wesley, and Kyle Mayhew. For the Allen Americans, they had 27 shots through two periods. They're led by Colby McCauley, who had four, and then three shots each for Blake Murray and Taryn Pfizer. One of Pfizer's three shots found the back of the net. Grizzlies have done a good job on the penalty kill, and they've really done a good job in this series on the penalty kill. Allen's power play has really struggled there. One for 15 over the last handful of games on the power play. And the Grizzlies so far are two for two in this game, and they're a perfect, I think, seven for seven on the penalty kill in this series, which is certainly big considering the Grizzlies are in last place in the league on the penalty kill at just 71 point, uh, 72.1%. So that's the story of the second period. A lot happened in the final seven minutes of the second. Allen leads 2-1, to one, but remember the Grizzlies will be on the power play to start the third period. And it looks like we got a fun 20 minutes in store. Who knows, maybe we'll get overtime for the second game of the road trip. Utah has only had one game decided past regulation this season. We'll come back and go over some scores from around the league as well as an update on that Cleveland Browns-Houston Texans NFL playoff game and some NHL scores as well. Second intermission over in Texas, and the Allen Americans lead Utah 2-1 to one on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. Smith's always gives you more ways to save on top of our lower-than-low prices. And when you download the Smith's app, you can enjoy over $500 in savings every week with digital coupons and earn fuel points to save up to a dollar per gallon at the pump. With a Boost membership, you'll save even more with double fuel points and free delivery. Discover more ways to save big every day. Smith's Fresh. Thanks to Les Schwab Tires, I'm a confident backseat driver, but mom's a little stressed about spending. Remember, breathe in. Now watch your speed and breathe out. Good. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So turn right here. Help keep drivers and backseat drivers safe with Les Schwab Tires. Second intermission over in Texas. Allen leads Utah 2-1. to one. It's a rubber match of a three-game series, but it's also the seventh and final game between the clubs, and the season series is on the line as both clubs have won three games against the other. One game in the league has gone final. Trois Rivieres defeats Atlanta 5-2. to two. Former Grizzlies forward Matthew Boucher had two assists, and former Grizzlies defenseman Corey Thomas had one assist. Twelve Riviere defeats Atlanta five to two. A couple other games in progress. Late second period, Adirondack leads Newfoundland two to one. Adirondack is actually in first place in the North Division. They've got forty nine standings points and a seven twenty one point percentage. Second place is Newfoundland, but they just have thirty seven points and a five forty four point percentage. So not only is Adirondack in first place in their division. They're in first by a wide margin. Late second period, Adirondack leads Newfoundland 2-1. to one. First intermission, South Carolina leads Orlando 3 to nothing. At 5 o'clock, many games get underway, including Savannah at Florida, Greenville at Jacksonville, Maine at Reading, Norfolk at Worcester. Also at 5 o'clock, Indy is at Wheeling. And at 5-15, Kalamazoo is at Toledo. Kalamazoo got a victory last night. It was Toledo's fifth regulation loss of the season. 
at 6 o'clock. Iowa is at Tulsa, and Cincinnati is at Wichita. Grizzlies will be in Wichita tomorrow afternoon for the only meeting this season at Interest Bank Arena. The Grizzlies did win two out of three games against Wichita in early November at Maverick Center. And two games starting at 7 o'clock in the Mountain Time Zone. Fort Wayne is at Rapid City, and Kansas City is at Idaho. Kansas City in first place in the division. Can't imagine too many Kansas City natives are watching that game, though, as the Kansas City Chiefs will take on the Miami Dolphins at Arrowhead Stadium, or they might call it GEHA Field or whatever. I still call it Arrowhead. Um, either way, the temperature there is supposed to be minus 5 degrees. Right now it is a balmy 6 degrees in the Kansas City area. After three quarters in the AFC wild card matchup, why the Houston Texans are dominating. They lead the Cleveland Browns 38 to 14 as the score was 24 to 14 at halftime as the, as the Texans scored a late second quarter touchdown and the Texans scored two touchdowns in the third quarter to extend the lead to 38 to 14. Joe Flacco, one touchdown, two interceptions for the Browns. C.J. Stroud has three touchdown passes for the Texans. Looks like three different receivers have caught the touchdowns, including Dalton Schultz, the former Dallas Cowboy tight end. As they show some highlights on flow sports of the first two periods. As the numbers are pretty difficult to spot. There's the first goal as Brzezinski got on a centering pass as Cranley was trying to poke it away along the near boards. And then it was put away by Easton Brzezinski. So it'll be fun to see that Dolphins-Chiefs game a little bit later on. At 5 o'clock, so the game getting underway in about 10, minute, uh, 10 minutes from now. Colorado is at Toronto. Grizzlies NHL affiliate is a Colorado avalanche, and they have a record of 27-12-3. and three. In Downtown Salt Lake at Delta Center. At 7.30, the Lakers take on the Utah Jazz. Jazz are 20-20 and 20 this year. The Jazz are a three-point favorite. In the NHL, many games are taking place tonight, just as the case here in this league. Three games have gone final. Washington defeats the New York Rangers 3-2. Vancouver shuts out Buffalo 1-0. And Ottawa is a 5-4 winner over San Jose. Ottawa is the NHL affiliate of the Allen Americans. First intermission, New Jersey leads Florida 2-0. At 5 o'clock, Pittsburgh is at Carolina. Seattle is at Columbus. Kings are at the Detroit Red Wings. Edmonton is at Montreal. Anaheim and Tampa Bay will do battle at 5 o'clock, as will be the case with Philadelphia and Winnipeg. At 6 o'clock, Dallas is at Chicago. Arizona at Minnesota. And the New York Islanders are taking on Nashville at 6 o'clock. And and Boston will be in St. Louis to take on the Blues. That game is going to be played at 6 o'clock. And at 8 o'clock, Calgary is at the Vegas Golden Knights. We'll come back in two minutes and have third period action as the Americans lead the Grizzlies 2-1 to one on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. America First has helped people start businesses, buy homes and cars, and achieve their financial goals. Today, our top priority is still the financial success of you and your family, which is why we're giving new members $100 when they sign up for a basic savings and checking account, and another $100 when they upgrade to premium checking and enroll in and use direct deposit. So head to AmericaFirst.com today and join the credit union that always puts its members first. This isn't just copper. It's our job. It's food on our family's tables. Without it, we couldn't stay in touch. It's what keeps our homes warm and our lights on. It's the power behind the team and a greener, brighter future. 
This isn't just copper. It's a proud Utah and a strong America. Expectations here will always remain high and we'll continue to find a way. put together a lot of good games you know now we're about set for third period action over at credit union of texas event center and tyson whiting hanging out at maverick center one time zone away and for the grizzlies they need a big third period they trail two to one they'll be on the power play for the first 53 seconds of the second period as Utah is playing their sixth straight game on the road, game six of nine straight on the road. They'll be in Wichita tomorrow afternoon, 305 face-off, 250 pregame show. Then the Grizzlies next week will be in Kansas City to take on the Mavericks this upcoming Friday and Saturday. Friday's game is going to be at 635, and Saturday will be at 505. Remember, the Grizzlies will be back at Mavericks Center for a three-game series against the Rapid City Rush, beginning with a Smith family night. On January 24th, and with Smith Family Night, it's four tickets for 40 bucks, and then $10 for each additional ticket. Grizzlies will have an AFCU Friday on Friday night, where tickets start at $10 when you pay using your AFCU debit or credit card at the Maverick Center box office. And Saturday, January 27th, which is two weeks from now, it's the Guns and Hoses Extravaganza, with ter- charity games starting around 12:30, leading up to the Grizzlies game at 7:10. Get your tickets for every Grizzlies home game. At utahgrizzlies.com. Taking the draw will be Brett Stapley. will be out there with Nathan Burke and Cole Gallant. And the two defensemen will be Kyle Mayhew and Josh Wesley. Grizzlies will be skating from left to right as we see it on Flow Sports. Your mind's eye see it on YouTube. Unfortunately, the Allen jerseys are just about impossible to tell uh, with the black jersey with black numbers, and dark red outline. Grizzlies win the draw as Wesley skates behind Cranley's net. Cranley has stopped 25 of 27 so far. He gets to Mayhew, who drops it off for Stapley, who lays it across the left side for Burke. Now to Wesley as he enters the zone, as Wesley zips it along the wall. As Allen throws it back to the left side, Wesley gets challenged. Wesley loses his balance. Allen tried to clear it out and couldn't. Oh, they're going to call a hook on Wesley. No, it's going to be a trip. As looked like Allen had gotten the puck and tried to clear it out. Wesley tripped him, and the referee spotted it and called the penalty. So that will do it for the Grizzlies' power play. We'll skate four on four for 26 seconds, and then the Americans will have a power play after that. So Allen leads two to one, and we're going to skate four on four as Josh Wesley gets two minutes for tripping, 27 seconds into the third period. Colby McCauley on the ice. He talks things over with Chris Mullary. As Hank Crone's going to be on the right wing. Skating four on four, draw one by the Americans. McCauley gets up top to Mullary. Right side, lefty shot is blocked away. It might have gotten a piece of Yoon. As Cutler gallops towards the far boards, it's taken by Fitz, who overskates it. Allen gets it across. Yoon couldn't reach it. Now Yoon gets it off the near boards, and he'll tap it across to Cutler. Cutler gains the line onside. As he'll stop in the point, he'll get to down the middle. As Wickers has a glance off his stick towards the end boards, Wickers gets blasted. Out of the box is Ty Farmer. He'll skate towards the bench as Allen begins a power play. Hank Crone along the left side glides towards the corner. Now he gets it up top. As the Americans will have a tap off of Wickers' stick. It goes to center ice. Wickers asks out the end of his shift. The Americans will back it out into their own end, their own end. 115 and counting left in the power play. As the Americans with a right wing pass, they get some air under it. Is gathered by Pfizer, who skates around Mayhew. Now Pfizer stops on the right side, gets it up top as the Americans bobble it, but they'll tap it off the end wall as the Americans get held up. Semek in the area. As the puck goes back towards Semek, he gets spun around in the near circle as the puck drifts out to center ice. Good job by the Grizzlies. Gallant takes the puck. He skates towards the right circle. Toe drag, now he's in the slot. He feeds it back to the right side. Shot to score! Mate Messner gets a shorty, and we're tied at two. Great effort by Cole Galani. Skated towards the right side, then veered off to the left. 
Fired a backhand pass towards the right side. Messner got it. And Messner's backhand shot went over Chase Perry. So the Grizzlies get their fifth shorthanded goal of the year. And Messner just had a pretty good look. Didn't go too high on Perry. Just got it past him. As Messner gets his third shorthanded goal of the season. And it's a brand new hockey game. So Gallant's going to get an assist. That will be his fifth assist in his last four games. As Mick Messner joins the double-digit goal-scoring club. He is the third different Grizzly to score 10 or more goals this season. Allen is still on the power play for the next 42 seconds. They win the draw. Well, I'd love to see that rule be adopted to where if you score a shorthanded goal, you've earned the right to get your person out of the penalty box. Allen skates towards the left side with it as Hank Crone feeds it out in front. Pass goes incomplete as Allen back to the right side has it. As they skate towards a circle, Allen skates from right to left during the period. As they get it up top to the right side, now they feed, feather it over to the left. As Allen will move it back to the right side as they direct it to the high slot. Allen back to the left circle. One-timer goes wide as it hits the side of the net as it went stick side on Cranley. As there's 10 seconds left in Wesley's penalty. As Cole Gallant pushes down an American. Allen back in their own net zone as it's tapped by Messner. Allen gathers it back. Wesley's out of the box right now as Utah's tied at two with Messner's shorthanded goal. Gallant getting an assist. As the puck taps off the near boards, it goes to Utah. As Berg skates towards the right circle to go, shot, he scores! Adam Berg gets his fourth of the year, and the Grizzlies have taken a 3-2 lead. Boy, Berg just skated along the right side, found himself all alone to the circle, and fired away. As the Grizzlies get two goals in under a minute to turn a 2-1 Allen lead into a 3-2 Grizzlies lead. What a momentum changer this has been. And the crowd and Allen looks stunned. As first it was McMester tying it up, and now Adam Berg giving Utah a 3-2 to two lead. As the draw goes towards Allen, but looks like we'll do it over again at center ice. As the linesman says, my bad. Daniel Barnes at center ice dropping the puck. As Tyler Penner will take the face off with Raby and Fitz. As the puck is dropped, Allen wins the draw. As Messner scored 142 in. And then about a minute later, it was Adam Berg giving Utah a 3-2 lead. Utah takes it away, left side. Now Penner, high slot, righty shot goes just wide. As Utah leads 3-2, now Raby to Penner will take a shot. Saved by Perry as the puck bounces off the near boards. Fitz over there as he gets double teamed. Allen took the puck away as the Americans will cross center ice. Two on two. The Americans gain the line. They veer off to the right side. This Terran Pfizer. Pfizer moves it across left side. Allen. Gets it towards the middle. Now they veer off to the left circle. Allen kicks it out in front. It bounced off a grizzly skate. Utah on two knees. Josh Wesley will saucer it over the head of Allen. Pass connects. Dylan Fitz skates to the right side. will take a shot. Saved by Perry. As Wesley on two knees, as Perry holds on, Wesley on two knees was able to advance the puck, get some air under it, and the pass ended up connecting to Fitz. Fitz skated towards the right circle and took a grade-A shot, but Perry made a save and held on with 16-38 left in the third. Wait, what action by the Grizzlies here over the last couple minutes? As Allen looks like they're definitely on their heels. Hank Crone's shaking his head back and forth. As Utah's got all sorts of momentum right now. It's a 3-2 Utah lead with 16-38 left in the third. Messner, who scored his 10th of the year, 144 in on an assist from Gallant. Messner wins the draw. Wickers, left side shot, saved by Perry. A lot of action in front of the net. As Perry gets back to his feet, Grizzly center to Berg will take a shot and it gets cut off and rolls towards Perry. Is looked like Joe Gattenby did a good job of cutting off Berg and not letting him get the time and space to get a shot off as the puck just glided slowly towards Perry and he was able to cover up with 16-27 left in the third. So once again, the Grizzlies with all sorts of momentum was able to get some sort of scoring chance there as Messner won a key face off. Now the draw is going to be in the near circle. If you're Chad Costello, the Allen coach, you have to think about using your timeout just to change the momentum here. As Messner wins the draw, Yoon, right point, fires towards the net. It goes wide and a little bit high off around Perry. As a Grizzly player loses his stick, Berg battles. It's Wickers that lost his stick as the puck kicks off the end boards. Allen gets it, and they move it ahead to the left side. Now diagonal pass to the right connects. Allen skates in. They trail 3-2. to two. They move it out to the left side. Pass goes incomplete as it ricochets off the near boards. Allen rolls it around as Yoon cuts it off and throws it towards center ice. It got redirected off the glass, and it goes out of play. 16-02 is left in the third period as Utah leads 3-2 on third period goals from Mick Messner and Adam Berg. 
Berg's goal scored 239 and was assisted by Nathan Burke and Jacob Semek, and it came less than a minute after Mick Messner's shorthanded goal. So Messner scored 142 in with Gallant getting an assist. It was a shorthanded goal, Utah's fifth of the season, and Messner's third. Risley's won the draw. It goes out to center ice. The puck lifts towards the near boards. Risley's dump it in as Burke scored 239 in with Burke and Semek getting the assist. So the goal's 57 seconds apart. Horizontal pass, glances off the Stapley stick. Stapley gathers it. As he'll skate towards the right side, righty shot, saved by Perry. It looked like Stapley was looking for somebody cutting towards the net. Instead, he called his own number after a while, and Perry was able to make a routine save with 15.41 left in the third. Well, you, you talk about the old term, the boys are buzzing. Well, that's definitely the case here. Announced attendance in Allen, 6,009. 6,009. As Utah leads 3-2, to two, Stapley wins the draw. As Wesley skates towards the right side, now he skates in, backhand shot is sticked away by Perry. As puck goes to the right point, Burke gets the bouncing puck, and he keeps it in. Burke's got two assists tonight. He feeds it to the near corner. Stapley battles. Allen comes out with a puck. As the Americans skating from right to left, four and a half minutes into the third. As Allen carries it across center ice, and they'll fire it in. Cranley stays in net, near corner. Wesley moves it ahead. It's cut off in the left point. Allen, left point, lefty shot. is blocked away in front of Cranley. Fits ahead to Burke. As Burke crosses center ice left wing. Three on three. Burke gains the line, but the Grizzlies are offside as everybody stops skating with 15.03 left in the third. So John's going to come back to neutralize. So a good crowd over in Allen. Grizzlies so far have outshot the Americans 7-1 to one in the third period. And what a turnaround for the Grizzlies who trailed 2-1 to one after 40 minutes of play. Series is on the line. The season series is also on the line. Utah wins the draw. Raby throws it in as now Allen gets it back as Penner delivers a hit as Allen crosses center ice as the Americans skate towards the right corner as Quinn Wickers pushes an American. Two-on-two -two battle in the corner it goes to Brian Hume who skates around Utah's net. Hume saucers it out to center ice. Pass doesn't connect, and it's going to be icing on Utah as we get another whistle with 14.36 left in the third. Last game of the season series as Ty Farmer skates towards the bench. Chris Mullary on the ice. Mullary's got one assist this evening. For the Grizzlies, Nathan Burke and Jacob Semek each have two assists. Both guys are a plus two. Cole Gallant also a plus two. He's got one assist. Grizzlies win the draw as they'll carry it out to new tries. Raby lost is now an American skater cut in front of him. Allen has the puck in their own zone with a black jersey with black numbers and a little bit of a dark red trim as the Americans cross center ice. They gain the line. Crone gets taken away as Fitz will tap it off the near glass. Puck goes slowly into the Allen zone as the Americans hustle after it. As Allen gets to neutralize, they veer off to the left. Now they cross the red line. Allen crosses into the zone as the Americans get it up top. A fan on a pass. Utah will chip it off the near boards. Grizz cross center ice. Aragon gains the line, skates towards the right circle, take a shot, and it's blocked away as Allen dove in front of him. And that was Chris Mullary. Now Berg around the net. He's played, played an outstanding series. Berg over to Aragon, but it's cut off by Mullary. Will backhand it towards the far side. The Americans will throw a diagonal pass to the left that connects. Allen crosses center ice, and they'll skip it into the right corner. Utah will bounce it off the wall as Berg battles. Two-on-two -two battle goes to Allen. They feed it up top. Americans, righty shot. Goes wide. Cranley might have gotten a piece of it. As Allen gets pushed by Aragon, Aragon throws down the Americans. Mayhew gets hit. As the puck goes to Wesley, who skates around Utah's net. Wesley now on the near side as he'll angle it out to the center ice. Grizzlies get it. Mayhew skates down the middle. Lefty shot goes wide. Puck glides towards Cutler as they get it to Stapley, trying to get it back to Cutler. And Malari cut in front of him. Make that Gattenby. As the puck bounced off of Gattenby, it goes to another American. They feed it out to the left side. It's Allen back in the blue line, angles it to the right. It ricochets off the boards, goes past Gallant as Wickers chases after it. He gets it as Wickers now on the near side. We'll get to neutralize right wing pass to Stapley, who will throw it in as the puck wobbles on its side. As Allen fanned on it, puck in the near corner. It's taken by Gallant, who backhands it to Stapley right side, centers it out in front, saved by Perry. As looked like Stapley was hoping for Burke to redirect it, kind of a soft shot that. Uh, just went towards Cran, went towards Perry. 
and he was able to cover up with 12.42 left in the third. Time out on the ice for back in one minute on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. Swap tires. I'm a constant backseat driver, but mom's a little stressed about spending. Remember, breathe in. Now watch your speed and breathe out. Good. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So turn here. Help keep drivers and backseat drivers safe with Les Schwab tires. When you pay with the Nitro card at Maverick, you always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon, every day. And you could save a whole lot more thanks to Nitro Best Price. Pick up a Nitro card and upgrade your Adventure Club account today. It's a Grizzlies 3 and the Americans 2. A ton of action here so far in the third period as Grizzlies trailed 2-1 to one heading into the third, but Mick Messner scored a shorthanded goal and that was 142 into the third with Cole Gallant and Jacob Semek getting the assist. And then Adam Berg, 57 seconds later, scored from the right circle with Berg and with the Burke and Semek getting the assist. So Berg got the goal from Burke and Semek as a draw in the American zone after Perry made a nice save on a Stapley shot. They lose it as they get it over to Stapley far circle. Grizzlies in the attack zone, 1230 and counting left in the third. Nathan Burke left side, feathers it across. It bounced off the boards as Burke was looking for Stapley. As the puck goes back to the far side, Allen in their blackout jerseys will rainbow it out to center ice. Puck bounced off the skate, and it goes back to Wickers, who gets tripped up by Allen. Is a call? Gonna, no, no call. Surprising. As Allen towards the left side, they get it across. Now back up top, Allen will take a lefty shot. Saved by Cranley, and he holds on. Boy, considering that Allen got the puck after that and we're able to get a shot off, boy, that you don't want to get on the officials, but that probably should have been called there. Uh, that's the second shot taken by Allen in the third period. The Grizzlies took nine of the first ten shots of the third. And that's really, you talk about, you know, you don't want to call everything, but that's one right there where a guy got a disadvantage by getting tripped up and the other team really took advantage and got a scoring chance out of it. As Utah wins the draw, Mayhew, Clears it out to center as the Americans back at their blue line start the attack from right to left. Right wing pass connects to center ice. Allen will bounce it off of Mayhew, and it goes to Josh Wesley, who's played a ton of minutes tonight. He'll tap it off the far boards. Now it goes back to Wesley, the Grizzlies captain. will tap it off the glass again. It goes to center ice. Grizzlies cross center. They lead 3-2. to two. Raby veers off to the left as he stops along the far wall as he moves it towards the corner. Now back to Raby, left circle. Raby back in the corner, dances around back and forth as Raby shakes and bakes. Now Fitz gets it, and he gets it up top. Grizzlies left point, lefty shot goes wide as the puck goes to the right side. Righty shot is blocked away as Raby and Fitz in the corner as Allen loses their balance. Now Raby surveying as Fitz trying to hack it away. Puck goes towards Raby, goes past Penner out to Wesley. Right side shot saved by Perry. Americans get the rebound. And they'll move it out to center ice. Left wing. Allen at the Utah blue line. As a poke away as they were throwing it towards the middle. Allen veers off towards the near wall. And they kick it to the corner. Utah took it away. Now Allen gets it back. American skate towards the right circle. Righty shot is blocked away. Good job by Semek because the puck lifts to center ice. It ricochets off the near wall. As Allen will pitch it ahead. Americans. Their pitch was incomplete. Now another American gets it as they settle into the offensive zone. Allen in the left point, throws it along the wall. Now the Americans throw it out in front. Yoon takes it away. He bounced it off an American. Now the puck is laying in front of the crease. It goes towards Wickers, who gets to Yoon back behind Utah's net. He'll direct it towards Aragon, near side. Now back to Messner, who left hands it to Wickers. Wickers gets to the line, and he gets bounced, but throws it off the end wall. Messner battles with an American. Aragon has to go between his legs. The Americans near side gets it about halfway through the third. Allen flies across center ice. Now they gain the line as they throw it towards the middle. Utah pokes it away. Grizzly 3-2 to two as Allen in the left point. 
skates towards the circle. Pfizer glides towards his right. He'll take a righty shot that goes over Cranley and off the glass behind the net. Aragon fires it off the far corner and chases after it. Aragon will flip it to center ice. The puck rolls towards Perry. It's gathered by the Americans about 10 feet in front of them as they'll move it out to center ice. As Allen out at center ice will backhand it in as it went over Semek's head. As the puck goes back towards Josh Wesley, he lifts it in the air as the puck bounces at the center ice logo. It's gathered by Utah. Burke skates towards the left circle, now towards his right. Drops it off for Cutler. Cutler's in the left circle, centers it to Stapley, but the pass goes wide. As Stapley was in front of the net, now Wesley. High slot, righty shot, saved by Perry. And he holds on as there's nine minutes and 21 seconds left in the third period. As Perry gives the puck to the linesman. Time out of the ice. We return in one minute as Utah leads Allen 3-2 to two on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. Since 1939, America First has helped people start businesses, buy homes and cars, and achieve their financial goals. Today, our top priority is still the financial success of you and your family, which is why we're giving new members $100 when they sign up for a basic savings and checking account and another $100 when they upgrade to premium checking and enroll in and use direct deposit. So head to AmericaFirst.com today and join the credit union that always puts its members first. This isn't just copper. It's our job. It's food on our family's tables. Without it, we couldn't stay in touch. It's what keeps our homes warm and our lights on. It's the power behind the team and a greener, brighter future. This isn't just copper. It's a proud Utah and a strong America. 921 is left in the third period as Utah leads Allen 3-2. As the Grizzlies so far have dominated the shot count in the third period by a count of 13 to 2. So you're talking about whatever was said in the second intermission locker room. I don't know that much needed to be said. But why you talk about a momentum switch? Grizzlies scored shorthanded with McMaster, and then 57 seconds later, Berg gave Utah a 3 to 2 lead. Staple will take the drop against Gavin Gould. As the puck is won by Allen, they skate around their net as Allen skates from right to left. Americans will backhand it to center ice. It goes past Josh Wesley as icing negated. Wesley delivers a big shot as Gallant gathers the puck as he'll drop it off for Mayhew as Mayhew carries it out to center ice. Diagonal pass to Gallant, connects it center ice. Gallant has a tap off a stick. It goes back towards Burke as Burke back in his own end. And now he gets to neutral ice. Burke will backhand it to the right for Gallant. Gallant skates to the right circle. It gets around an American. Allen took the puck away from him as Allen will Throw it between Gallant's legs. It goes to the right point for Mayhew. So he'll tap it to Gallant. Back to Burke, who skates around, around the net. Now Burke's in the far corner as he's being shadowed by a smaller American. Now Burke, over on the right, left side, gets to the circle, takes a lefty shot. Saved by Perry. The puck ricochets off the end boards. Wickers, Burke over skates it. Allen gets it as they move it ahead. Americans, backhanded to center. I steeply picked it off. Stapley, the former Canadian draft pick, Displaying good hands, gets to center ice, and he'll roll it along the wall as Raby has to go past him along the far side. Just over eight minutes left in the third. Utah leads three to two. Allen diagonal pass connects to the left. They'll get it off the right side as the Americans look to center to bounce off of Fitz's stick and rolls to the far corner. Now pass goes to Fitz as Fitz backhands it past Tyler Penner. And it goes to Raby on the right side. Raby skates towards his left. He'll take a lefty shot, and it's blocked away as Raby gets dragged down. As the Americans get it as Penner lost control. As Allen crosses center ice, Grizzlies back defensively. Allen skates towards the near goal line. Mayhew pokes it away. He's out there with Wesley. As the puck goes back to Utah, Fitz carries it across center ice. Now Fitz gets it in. Fitz right wing, righty shot goes wide. He fired a low liner past Perry, but it went wide. As the Americans get to center ice, Mayhew took it away before the Americans enter the offensive zone. Mayhew gets it behind Utah's net for Wickers. Back to Mayhew. Diagonal pass towards the right. It's taken by Raby at the Utah blue line. He moves the head for Messner, who tapped off the boards. Messner gets around an American. He skates around the net as Messner over towards Cutler. Now back towards Messner, but Messner vacated the area as Allen will get a back, back around center ice. They cross center. Less than seven minutes left. The Americans... 
get tripped up and a call is made this time and the Americans are getting on a power play. A uh, hooking's actually going to be the cause. Brandon Cutler will skeet towards the box. Cutler probably reminding the official about a few minutes ago when the Grizzlies got tripped up and nothing was called. But this time, Brandon Cutler gets two minutes for hooking as the American got dragged down. Six minutes and 50 seconds left in the third. And the first full power play of the second period. Uh, this is the second power play for the Americans here in the third period. Remember in the last... the Last power play Allen had, McMessner scored shorthanded. The Grizzlies have five shorthanded goals this season. Three of them are by Messner. He's on the ice right now with Yoon and Wickers. Taking the draw is going to be Cole Gallant. For Allen, taking the face off is Blake Murray. Murray, the former Carolina Hurricanes draft pick. Murray is a plus 18 in 27 games this year. Allen wins the draw, right side shot, and a stick goes flying as the stick exploded in two. As the Americans battle in the far circle, as Wickers over in the corner with Messner, puck goes back to the right side. Chris Maleri gathers it. He'll slide it to Crone on the left side. As Crone directs it back towards Maleri. Maleri over to the right side. One-timer saved by Cranley. And he holds on with 136 left in the power play and 625 left in regulation. Will Cranley's been active tonight. He has stopped 28 of 30 as the Grizzlies have a 14 to 3 shot edge in the third period. As Kobe McCauley over there on the right wing, as Cranley will get in front of his crease, 136 left in the Allen power play as Brandon Cutler got two minutes for hooking. Draw one by the Grizzlies. Wesley skeets around Cranley's net and he'll fire it off a stanchion. Puck goes to center ice. The Americans will backpedal into their own zone as they want to enter with some momentum. As the Americans skate down the middle, now they get to neutralize. Malari kicks to his right. As the Americans feed it back to the left side, the Americans are now in the attack zone. Utah took it away, and they clear it out. Allen has struggled on the power play as of late. They were 1-for-15 over their last handful of games coming in. They are 1-for-4 right now. As the Americans get it back to center ice, right wing. Allen crosses the zone. They'll tap it off the far boards. They get around Adam Berg. As Allen backhands it to the left point, as Chris Mullary moves it across, less than six minutes left in regulation. Uh, get it back to Crone on the left side, takes a lefty shot, and it goes high, stays in play, actually goes out of play, it looks like, off the protective netting. As Crone looked like he tried to go top shelf, but it just got too much air under it. As now Allen slams, a player for Allen slams a stick on the ice. As there's 46 seconds left in the power play. I think slamming a stick on the ice was Kobe McCauley once he realized that his shift was over. It's time to go to the bench. So Allen makes a, a switch. Easton Brzezinski on the ice right now on the right wing. He scored Allen's first goal. Draw one by the Americans. Left side. Righty shot is blocked. And looked like it deflected off of Wickers. Boy, Wickers looks like he's hurting. As Wickers blocked the shot. And play had stopped because Wickers had the puck in his pads. But that shot looked like it smarted a little bit as Wickers was limping back and forth. Looks like he'll be replaced by Josh Wesley. 39 seconds left in the power play as Quinn Wickers with a blocked shot and a blast taken from the left point by, we believe, Eric Williams. As a draw one by Utah as Brian Yoon skates along the near side. Yoon crosses center ice, gets to the right point, fires a righty shot, saved by Perry, who held on to it for a little bit, but the whistle never blew. As the Americans, back in their own end, skeet towards the far side. They'll tap it off the wall. As Allen, 20 seconds left in the power play, crosses center ice with speed. They'll veer it off to the left as it bounced off a grizzly as Utah will saucer it to center ice. And it goes all the way towards Perry, who plays it behind his net. 10 seconds left in the power play as Allen skeets towards the far side. They get to new tries. They cross center. Americans get around at Nathan Burke because they enter the zone, but they get it taken away as Mayhew will clear it out. Cutler's out of the box. Chasing after it is Nathan Burke. He gets the puck behind Perry's net. Grizzlies could use some insurance here late in the third period. Cutler right wing fires towards the net. Perry cuts it off in front of, in the crease and holds on with four minutes and 40 seconds left in the third. Time out on the ice. We'll find out how this one ends in 45 seconds. As Utah leads Allen 3-2 on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. 
Since 1939, America First has helped people start businesses, buy homes and cars, and achieve their financial goals. Today, our top priority is still the financial success of you and your family, which is why we're giving new members $100 when they sign up for a basic savings and checking account, and another $100 when they upgrade to premium checking and enroll in and use direct deposit. So head to AmericaFirst.com today and join the credit union that always puts its members first. Maverick's new Bean to Cup machines always deliver a freshly ground cup of coffee on demand so you can enjoy any of our premium roasts at their best, day or night, hot or ice. Enjoy a fresh cup today. It's the Grizzlies 3 and the Americans 2. So far in the third period, Utah has outshot Allen 16-4. to Grizzlies are up to 41 shots, which is the amount they took on Wednesday in a 5-4 loss. Allen has taken 31. Grizzlies scored two goals, 57 seconds apart. McMessner shorthanded 142 in, and Adam Berg 239 in. Jacob Semick has two third period assists. Nathan Burke has two assists. Cole Gallant with one assist. Brett Steepley with an assist. Grizzlies goal scored by Brian Ewan, McMessner, and Adam Berg. Draws in the Allen zone after Brandon Cutler fired a shot from the right wing. Steepley will be out there with Burke and Gallant. Utah wins the draw. Wesley, right side shot saved by Perry. Rebound shot. And backhand shot is saved by Perry again. Puck still in play as Stapley took the second shot. Left side, Burke fires towards the net. It's blocked away as it goes to Gallant. He gets up top for Mayhew, but the puck exits the zone. Grizzlies back it out of their blue line to restart, to reset the attack. As Wesley moves it ahead, puck bounced along the way, so no icing as Allen will zip it out to center ice. Pass doesn't connect. Cranley behind his net. We'll throw it to the far side. 408 and counting left in the third. As Grizzlies throw a diagonal pass that bounced off an American. Allen gets tripped up in the slot. Is the penalty going to be called? No. As Grizzlies take it. As Dylan fits across the center ice. He gains the line. Skates towards the right circle. Fits with a shot. Saved by Perry. And he holds on as Fitz tried to go five hole on Perry. But it looked like the Allen goaltender closed it up at the last second as he holds on. And we get a whistle with 352 left in the third. Boy, as Fitz was skating in, normally he just kind of stops around the dot and fires a slap shot. This time he skated a little bit closer in, but Perry was able to close the door. It's the Grizzlies three and the Americans two. As Chris Mullary will skate towards his bench and he'll take a seat. As Tyler Penner will take the draw against Grant Bear. Penner wins the draw as Raby in the near corner. As he gets double teamed, Fitz in the area as Raby gets held up. 344 and counting left in the third. Utah's up by one. As Skip Carey used to say, well, insurance one hurt. Allen gathers the puck out of the pile. As the Americans still in their own zone, three and a half minutes left. As Raby delivers a hit, tried to slide it on his backside towards Fitz. And the puck ended up with Allen. Americans cross center ice. Now they gained the line. They'll backhand it towards Utah as the Grizzlies clear it out. Allen zips it across. The Americans skate back in. It looks like Allen is offside as we get a whistle with 319 left in the third. So draw is going to come back towards new try. Easton Brzezinski was the one accepting the pass on the left side. As he has six goals against the Grizzlies, including one tonight. The Americans scored first, 10-57 into the second. Brian Yoon scored 15-41 for Utah to tie it up. And Taryn Pfizer gave Allen a 2-1 lead, 17-44 into the second, as Allen led 2-1 after two periods. But then the Grizzlies scored the two goals in a 57-second stretch early in the period. Grizzlies win the draw. They throw it all the way deep into the Allen zone. Far corner as Messner over there with Berg and a couple Americans. About three minutes left as Berg gets pushed in the back. Messner holds his ground as Messner loses the puck as Allen comes out of the pie with, a, with it. As Berg on the back check throws down an American. Allen at center ice will whip it ahead as it bounced off the unit. goes deep in the Grizzlies zone in the near corner. Yoon gets hit in the back behind Utah's net, but he keeps his feet as he gets to Berg as Berg. Well, backhand it to Messner. He gets it taken away at neutral ice. Allen gets it back in as they toss it to the near corner. As Yoon gets blasted by an American, but Yoon was able to glide it along the near wing wall. Puck at center ice. Allen gets it back. 2.30 and countings left in the third. As Utah leads 3-2. to two. Americans will cross center ice, skating from right to left. They'll lift it in as it ricochets and skips towards the right corner. It goes to Cranley, who fires it off the far corner. It bounces off of Burke. Now it goes to Mayhew, who taps it off of Burke's stick. Burke gets tripped up, but he keeps his feet and throws a right wing pass to Wesley. Wesley gains the line. He'll slide it off the end boards. Cutler chases after it. 
As he gets at the far side, Cutler skates back towards the point. Two minutes left. As the Grizzlies over in the left circle get the puck. They'll drop it off for Stapley. Stapley, left circle, gets dragged down. As the puck goes to Burke, who gets it up top for Mayhew. Mayhew fires towards the net. Perry makes the save as he just made the body stop with 152 left in the third as the whistle blows. Grizzlies will have an offensive zone draw. And you talk about the puck possession that the Utah Grizzlies have generated here in the third period. They have now outshot the Americans 20 to 5 in the third period as Utah is up to 45 shots on the evening. A lot of action here in the third period for that forward line of Stapley, Burke, and Gallant. That's the three forwards on the ice here. Smoke them if you got them. Utah's up by one here late in the third. As Stapley will crouch down as Grizzlies looking to go three and three on this road trip here through six games. They got three more left. Utah wins the draw. Mayhew, left point, shot is saved by Perry. Puck still in play. As Allen will throw it to the left point, it bounced off of Burke as it kicks to the high slot. Stapley gathers it. 140 left as Stapley glides slowly towards the left point. Now he backhands it to the far corner. Burke has a tap off his stick as Allen races after it in the near corner. As they move it ahead as it bounced off the linesman. Allen throws the center ice. Penner throws it back in as Perry still in net with Allen down one. Americans have it with 122 left in the third as Allen hangs out back in their own zone. Now they throw it across. Now Allen skates around Perry's net as the Americans will... Skip it out to center ice. Allen crosses center. They backhand it to the right side. They couldn't handle it as Wickers over to the far corner. Allen throws it from one corner to the other as they backhand it to the left point. Maleri moves it across to Williams. Now back to Maleri. Less than a minute left. Williams now on the right side. He fires towards the net. Saved by Cranley. Rebound goes to Utah. They fire towards an empty net. And it goes just wide for icing. Icing is on Utah. It looked like Fitz was firing towards the empty net. He didn't miss it by much. As the whistle blew with 50.5 seconds left. As Utah's up 3-2. to two, Grizzlies have been in the offensive zone for the majority of this third period. Looks like timeout's going to be called by Allen. As Taryn Pfizer and company will skate towards the bench. And they'll talk with future Hall of Fame player Chad Costello. As the Grizzlies will go over and talk with the all-time leading scorer in team history, Ryan Knasiewicz. As Utah leads 3-2 to two in what's been an exciting third period for the Grizz. Utah has outshot Allen 21-5 to five here in the third period. Some critical face-offs upcoming. Here recently in some of the close games, the opposition has gotten the better of the face-off circle. If Utah could either be Tyler Penner or maybe Brett Stapley taking the draw for the Grizzlies. As Allen has come out of the huddle, and they'll skate towards the offensive zone. Murray might be the one taking the face off. He's taken a few critical draws here for the Americans so far. As Hank Crone also on the ice. Critical sequence here in the final minute of regulation. 50.5 seconds left. Tyler Penner will take the draw for the Grizz. Utah leads 3-2 to two. as a draw won by Utah. As Wesley throws it towards Mayhew, Allen's net is empty on the other side. Penner will brush it out to center ice. Puck goes back into the Grizzlies zone. Now it's lifted to center. Allen gathers it as they reset. Right wing, they'll wrap it around the boards. Cranley lets it go to the near corner. Wickers over there battles with Penner. Half a minute left. Fitz gets tripped up. Left point, Allen will lift it towards the corner. Near side, Americans will wrap it around to the right side. Allen. Gets around Raby. As Raby pokes it away, Grizzlies get it. Josh Wesley will fire it off the far boards. Fitz skates over there. No icing. Fitz along the end. Wall board centers the pass. Shot to score! Josh Wesley scores to put this baby in the refrigerator as the Grizzlies have taken a 4-2 lead. Boy, Fitz was along the end boards. Found Wesley cutting in front of the empty net. Pass was perfect from Fitz to Wesley. And the Grizzlies captain, who's played an outstanding game, gets his eighth of the year. And the crowd in Allen is stunned. As it's now 4-2 Grizzlies, Utah is going to win this series two games to one, and they're also going to win this season series four games to three. What an effort by the Grizzlies here in the third period. As they have outshot the Americans 
at least 22 to 5 or 6, depending on how the final tally comes out. As Allen wins the draw, they're down 4 to 2. American skate towards the near side. Utah pokes it away, and they backhanded the center ice. Five seconds left. Americans will just watch the time run out. What a sweet victory for the Grizzlies. Grizzlies win. Grizzlies win 4-2, to two and there is no doubt about it. As Mick Messner scored a shorthanded goal, 142 into the third period to tie it up at two. And then 57 seconds later, Adam Berg scored what turned out to be the game winner as he scored from the right circle. And Josh Wesley added an empty netter at the end as the Grizzlies get their first road series victory of the season as they come away 4-3 and three against the Americans this year. Ryan Kanaswich and company have to be ecstatic. And how about Will Cranley? He was outstanding in net, stopping at least 30 of 32 in the victory as Cranley gets his second win in a Grizzlies uniform. And hey, what can you say? Fitz and Raby got the assist on the Wesley empty netter, 1945 in. As the Grizzlies come away with a power play goal, a shorthanded goal, they scored on an empty net, and they also scored five on five. Four different ways for the Grizzlies to complete the victory as they get a 4-2 win. And how about that effort? Nathan Burke, Brandon, uh, Brandon Cutler, Brett Stapley, and Glant. Really what won the game in that third period was just the outstanding efforts by Stapley, Burke, Gallant. Oh boy, what an effort by all six defensemen. Brian Yoon was a standout performer again. Mick Messner came up clutch. It had been a while since he'd found the back of the net, but his shorthanded tally really got the ball rolling on the Grizzlies' comeback win. Four to two, the Grizzlies win as they scored three unanswered in the third period. We'll come back and have the postgame show as once again it's a happy victory for the Grizzlies as they win two out of three games against the Allen Americans. The road trip is now three and three with three games left. Final score from Credit Union of Texas Event Center, it's the Utah Grizzlies four and the Allen Americans two. This is Utah Grizzlies hockey presented by Rio Tinto Kennecott. Commercial to recreational truck accessories, Mountain Land Truck Outfitters has got what you need. Flatbeds, spray and bed liners, lifts and leveling kits, wheels and tires. Mountain Land Truck Outfitters proudly uses a brand you know and trust. And with our experienced, knowledgeable, and friendly staff, your visit here will be informative and enjoyable. Stop into our convenient location in Provo at 265 South 100 West or call 801-225-4637 to get a quote for your fleet or individual truck. Mountain Land Truck Outfitters. We were talking about the kind of victories that can turn a season around. How about that third period effort by the Grizzlies? They trailed two to one after 40 minutes and almost felt like the Grizzlies with that third period effort, they would just willed themselves to victory. Just kind of one of those games where it looked like they weren't going to be denied. And so Utah comes away two and one on the series against Allen. They won the last two games. They won six to two last night. And really it was a tough effort because Allen, Really put together a strong defensive effort in the first 40 minutes. And, you know, Allen's got a pretty good team with a lot of talented forwards. And the Grizzlies just found a way. And that's really what made this victory so exciting is the Grizzlies just dug in deep. And they did what good teams do. You know, good teams don't say coulda, woulda, shoulda. They just find a way to get the job done. And the Grizzlies did that as they picked up their third road victory of the season. And even though there's still a tough road to hoe, a tough hill to climb, whatever you want to say, for the Grizzlies here on the remainder of the road trip and for the Grizzlies to get back towards a playoff position here in the final couple months of the season. But Utah really put together a great effort and something that I think they hope that they can build on, not only for tomorrow in Wichita, even though it's going to be a pretty tired team with it being the fourth game in five days with travel between tonight, between now and Sunday's game, then they got two games against the first place Kansas City Mavericks. It'll be interesting to see what Tad O'Had's crew looks like. But you have to feel good about the comeback attempt, trailing two to one after one period. Let's recap the scoring as nobody scored in the first 30 minutes and 57 seconds of the game. Then Easton Brzezinski got his 16th of the year with Grant Abair and Chris Maleri getting the assists. 
Grizzlies tied it up 15-41 in as Brian Yoon got his third of the year as he fired away from the right point. Looked like it bounced off of somebody. Burke was net front. It might have bounced off an American and into the back of the Allen net tied up at one. Americans took a 2-1 lead as Taron Pfizer scored a power play goal, which is his first in an Allen uniform. Pfizer is making his third appearance for Allen as he was just reassigned to the Americans this week from the AHL's Belleville Senators. Hank Crone and Eric Williams got the assist. Allen led 2-1 to one after two periods. In the third frame, the Grizzlies outshot the Americans 22-5. to five. And It just felt like there was that resolve that, like I said before, they weren't going to be denied tonight. It kind of had that feeling that they saw victory, even though it was 2-1. to one, They knew that they couldn't you know, continue with the, their road ways. They knew that they had to turn things around, and this was a great third period to do it. The turning point in the game, I would call it the play of the game, was the shorthanded goal scored by Mick Messner. Cole Gallant really made the play. He skated towards the right side, then he veered off to the left and just kind of threw it behind his back for Messner. Messner got the puck and fired a crafty-looking backhand shot past Chase Perry as Messner got his third shorthanded goal of the season and his 10th goal overall as he becomes the third Grizzly player to have 10 or more goals this season. Jacob Semek also picked up an assist, as well as Cole Gallant, 142 into the third period. 57 seconds later, Adam Berg just skated along the right side, got to the circle, and fired it past Chase Perry. Didn't go high, didn't go low. It just kind of felt like it got through him. For Berg, it's his fourth, uh, fifth goal of the season. He's got goals in back-to-back games here, as Nathan Burke and Semek picked up the assist. So Jacob Semek with two third-period assists. And then it stayed a 3-2 game for quite a while. The Grizzlies had the puck in the offensive zone, or was that neutralized almost the entire period, as there were very few opportunities for the Americans in the third frame. 22 shots for the Grizzlies, only five for Allen. you got to give Chase Perry some credit. He did a good job keeping the Americans in the game as he was facing the onslaught from the Grizzlies there in the third period. Uh, you know, late when the Grizzlies needed to win some some faceoffs, when the Grizzlies needed to buckle down defensively there in the final minute, they were able to do so. And then it looked like the Grizzlies had cleared the puck out. Fitz just skated down there, no icing. And then Fitz was there towards the end boards and then just found Wesley cutting in front of the net. And Wesley put it away, 1945 into the third to complete the scoring. Boy, how about the road trip for Dylan Fitz? You talk about a guy that's got four goals here on the road trip, and he picked up a main assist, and Fitz really played a good game. And the great thing about this series is it felt like it was kind of that breakout performance for that Fitz, Raby, and Penner line. Penner didn't get any points tonight, but he won a couple of key faceoffs at the end. He ended up a plus one, and he had an outstanding series. Dakota Raby really played well in this series. He had two goals on Wednesday. He had one assist on both Friday and Saturday night, and he really did some outstanding things as he's playing his best hockey of the year, and I thought throughout the entire game, Will Cranley was just outstanding in net. You talk about a guy that saw a lot of action there early on, in particular in the first half of the game, and even though he didn't see a ton of action there in the third period, when he needed to make the key saves, he certainly came through as Cranley got a second win in a Grizzlies uniform, and it looks like between him, Dante Genuzzi, who got the victory last night, and obviously on Wednesday, Trent Miner, who got called back up to the AHL's Colorado Eagles on Thursday. Looks like the Grizzlies are pretty solid in net. And, you know, just one of those things, even though the Grizzlies didn't win the special teams battle, they were 0 for 4 on the power play. Allen was 1 for 4, but do remember the Grizzlies scored shorthanded. Uh, you think about the Grizzlies' four goals, they were scored four different ways tonight. Yoon's second period goal was five on five. McMessner scored shorthanded four on five early in the third period. Adam Berg's goal was scored. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> scored three different ways, let's say, as Berg's was five on five as well. Uh, they had two five on five goals. They tell you not to do math on the air. I did it anyway and looked like a fool. Uh, two five on five goals, a shorthanded goal, and then the empty netter towards the end. As Grizzlies come away with a 4 2 victory. How about the shot count? You know, Allen does allow about 41 shots per game this season. The Grizzlies ended up with 47, which were led by 22 in the third period. Allen had five shots in the third. They ended up with 32, which is about on average as to what the Grizzlies allow per game this season. Now, what can you say? Let's see if they get the three stars of the game. As Let's see if they posted them yet. They have. 
Third star is Taron Pfizer. He scored one goal that came in the second period. He's the third star. Second star is Chase Perry, the Allen goaltender who got the loss, but he did play a good game, stopping 42 of 45. The first star is Adam Berg. He scored what turned out to be the game winner, 239 into the third period. So no love for the road team there in the three stars. I would say that Messner, with his shorthanded goal, that really got the ball rolling. I'd almost have Messner get a star, but that's just me. And I'd probably say, let's go with Utah's three stars. We'll just create our own. Yeah, Berg got the game winner. Maybe we'll give him the third star, or maybe we'll give him the first star. Second star, uh, we'll go with Messner. We had that shorthanded goal and that tied the game at two. And let's give Will Cranley a star. Cranley's the Grizzlies' third star, stopping 30 of 32 as he gets his second victory in a Utah uniform. So that's what's going to be officially. It's Berg, Perry, and Pfizer. Those are the three stars, but we'll go with Berg, Messner, and Cranley, which are Utah's three stars of the game. That was a ton of fun. Looked like a really good crowd over at Credit Union of Texas Event Center. 6,009 was the announced attendance, 6009 in a game that lasted two hours and 28 minutes. Well, it was the Grizzlies' third game in four days, and the road trip continues as the Grizzlies will get on a bus and travel to Wichita, Kansas for a Sunday afternoon battle. It's going to be 3.05 in the Mountain Time Zone, 4.05 locally in Wichita, and we'll see if the Grizzlies can come away with the victory. Utah traditionally plays well against the Thunder. Now, remember, Wichita is going to be a tired team as well as they played Cincinnati last night and lost in overtime. They're going to play Cincinnati again this evening. So even if the Grizzlies are going to be pretty tired, that's going to be the same case for the Wichita Thunder come Sunday afternoon. Well, that'll about wrap things up. As for the Grizzlies, they get their first road series victory of the season. Their record goes to 14-20 and 20 overall. They are now 3-14 and 14 on the road, but Utah is 3-3 three and three through six games of the nine-game road trip. The Allen Americans with the regulation loss, their record falls to 17-19-1. and one. Well, we'll see if it's going to be Will Cranley or Dante Januzzi in net. Either way, both guys have got a victory in this series as Januzzi stopped 25 of 27 last night. And tonight, Will Cranley put together an outstanding performance, stopping 30 of 32. Now that'll wrap things up. I'm going to go watch some football this evening, Dolphins and Chiefs, and pack it up, and we'll get back at it tomorrow afternoon. 250 pregame show, 305 faceoff. It's the only meeting uh, the Grizzlies are going to have at Interest Bank Arena. Remember, Utah did win two out of three games over in Wichita in early November. Grizzlies defeat the Allen Americans 4-2. to two. Utah finished up the regular season with a 4-3 and three record against the Americans. We'll talk on Sunday afternoon at 2.50. Until then, I'm Tyson Whiting, and it is what it is.